Then I asked the Lord, what if it's you? And he said, yeah, I Then I asked my God, what if it's you? And he said, yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, Hello everybody. Welcome to um this special edition of uh not not a something and not a dinner. Not a dinner. <laughs> not a dinner. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to be your host. I'm going to be your host. My my name is Joshua Mike Bamiloy, aka J Mikey. And uh, my name is Tolulokwe Mike Bamiloy, aka T Mikey. Fantastic. And we're going to be your hosts for today. Yeah. We are so excited, so honored to be the host in this fantastic program mm -hmm. of today um without okay first of all before we even jump right into the program uh okay. what's the theme of this program mm, what's the theme of the program uh, what's the theme <laughs> of the program courtship do's and don'ts courtship do's and, and don'ts don't. that is in a courtship mm -hmm. what are the do's and what are the do not what are the do not <laughs> exactly so um uh, first of all, I think we need to make it clear that if some people are here and um, they are not worthy of being in courtship situations yet, um, should we tell them to just stick around? Yes, they can learn. Or that we should excuse no, them? No, they can learn. It's, it's never too early to start learning some of these things. When did you start learning about courtship? Um, I can't remember. Still. Well, in primary school, did you learn about courtships? Well, I might have heard it in passing. Maybe a pastor was preaching. And oh, you might have joined the Zoom program. I mean, it's possible. By <laughs> and vision career. It's okay. You know? One or two nuggets. So we are sure and we are excited to know that there will be a lot of things that will be learned yes. in the program of today. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so uh, we're going to jump into the opening prayer. And the opening prayer uh, will be taken by uh, uh, um, evangelist, um, 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 <laughs> pastor, Missy, sorry, uh, Dickin. She, 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 she's a Dickin, by the way, in case you're wondering. You can take that again. <laughs> Please take us to the opening prayer. <laughs> opening prayer, please. <laughs> okay, let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for an opportunity like this. We thank you for this amazing program. We thank you, oh Lord, for the many people that are going to be part of this program and we thank you that everyone will be blessed in the name of jesus amen lord we pray that you will have your way holy spirit take control amen in the name of jesus amen we pray that everyone that attends this program will not leave the same way they came in jesus name. amen take home their blessings with them in the name of jesus amen to bring about transformation renewal in the lives of people in the name of jesus amen lord take control have your way in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. amen. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And amen. Talk about my family. 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 I don't know why we bind every spirit of mistakes in this program in the name of Jesus. Talk about my family. Okay. All right. So. uh <laughs> All right, so uh, we're jumping into the next program, and uh, the next program will be Praise and Worship by Rasta J. For those who don't know who Rasta J is, there has been some sweet melody that has been sounding from the corners of this Zoom program at the mm -hmm. beginning, and they are my special friends, and they are twins, gifted, anointed twins. Rasta J is short for Ruth and Esther Jarrett, so it's Rasta J, and they'll be taking us in a in a 10 minutes praise and worship
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. How many of us enjoyed that wonderful praise and worship session? I indeed enjoyed it. Thank you so much to Ruth and Esther, Jared. God bless you. With more anointing in the Amen. name of Jesus. That Amen. was very, very powerful. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. So right about now, we're going to be moving on to the next um, program, next item on the program. And we're going to be having our welcome address. We're going to be having the welcome address. And immediately after that, we'll be having the Bible reading. And to take us in the welcome address in Bible reading is our dear coordinator, Mommy Jared. A.K.A. Mommy Tuck. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Praise God. Oh, yeah, so, you're welcome. I want to welcome everyone on behalf of Mommy Gloria Bamiloye, the Pioneer of Vision Career Global Mission. My name is Topumbo Jarrett. I'm the coordinator of Vision Career Texas and the organizers of the um, retreats. Not a dinner and not a something. Hallelujah. This is a very special edition because this is the first time we are having both groups come together. For one retreat hallelujah so awesome 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 sorry if you are not seeing me properly i'm behind the scene i just have to switch on my camera so i'm using two systems hallelujah so i'm going to take the bible reading before i say my small small speech uh j mike is used to my small small speech when we have a retreat hallelujah so we are about our bible reading for this retreat is first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 1 to 8 i'm going to be taking it from ppp and i'm going to read it dramatically so be just pardon me. Just listen to these words. Hallelujah. And now, beloved brothers and sisters, since you have been mentored all this time, we've been having this retreat. You've been mentored by us with respect to living for God and pleasing him. I appeal to you in the name of the Lord Jesus with this request. Keep faithfully growing through our teachings even more and more. Hallelujah. For you already know the instructions we've shared with you through the Lord Jesus. God's will is for you to be set apart for him in holiness, that you keep yourselves unpolluted from sexual defilement. Yes, each of you must guard yourself, guard your sexual purity with holiness and dignity, not yielding to lustful passions like those who don't know God. You know God, so we are not like them. Never take selfish advantage of a brother or a sister in this matter. For we've already told you and solemnly warned you that the Lord is the adventure in all these things. For God's call on your life is not a life of compromise and, and perversion, but to a life surrounded in holiness. Therefore, whoever rejects this instruction isn't rejecting human authority, but rather God himself who gives us his precious gift, his spirit of holiness, meaning that the Holy Spirit has been given unto you as a child of God, so you can fulfill the instruction he has given us. Hallelujah. So the theme today is courtship, do's and don'ts. We've had different themes in the past. We talked about relationship, how to know. We talked about keeping yourself from addiction. We talked about how to be a man. We talked about how not to be a dinner. We talked about not how to be, how to be something. But today we are focusing on courtship. Do's and don'ts. I want us to know that the Lord has a purpose in mind when he decides to establish the mind institution. God established the mind institution, not the world. Number one, he established it for fellowship, established it to establish his kingdom so that we can establish his kingdom upon the earth and also to bring forth godly children. He's very interested in who you get married to. He said it is not good for a man to be alone. And then he brought a bone of his bone and a flesh of his flesh. And my prayer tonight, today, whatever time you are, where you are, that you will not marry your enemy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Two examples. Mary. Mary was engaged to Joseph. They were in courtship. But guess what? Mary was a virgin. Meaning that engagement does not mean that she should lose her virginity. So that's one. I just want to throw out. I'm not the speaker who I'm going to hand over to the anchors. Number two, God was able to use her during that courtship. That's why she was handpicked. And he said that she was going to be the vehicle through which Jesus was going to come. A pure, a pure vessel. Hallelujah. And she was in courtship. Jo Joseph had self-control. Her fiancé had self-control. 
He did not, even when they got married, because she was pregnant with Jesus, he did not know Mary until, he did not sleep with Mary until she had given birth to Jesus. So if you look at these two, two ex these examples, these two individuals, God was able to use them. So today, as you are going into this retreat, you are going to be listening to mentors. J. Mikey, T. Mikey, too, are going to be adding their own. And uh, we are going to have the, the windows coming. Mommy Remy is already in the house. Please, please, please. You can ask questions. If you are not clear about some things, invite your friends who are not here. So many things are going to be dropping tonight. And the Lord is going to use these people mightily. And I just want to thank them that God is going to use them. He has already put a spirit upon them. And we're going to have a wonderful time. Ask questions. Send questions on the chat privately, whatever it is. Please, it is well in the name of Jesus. Enjoy yourself. That was fantastic. That was good. That was great. It's always a pleasure um, doing this kinds of programs with mommy and when mommy said that lulu is going to be here well by the way this is lulu uh when mommy said lulu is going to be joining me in hosting this time I said thank god because there was a time J me and jason hosted the space yeah. show yes now although i didn't i didn't know that when i put him on my lap he was <laughs> his head popped up a bit and i was hosting it was later like a year later mommy jared was not telling me that ah we saw jason i was like oh okay <laughs> so Good to have you here thank you very much mommy and thank you and may god continually increase you amen. and give you greater inspiration amen. greater anointing for these kinds of programs for the sake of the singles in the house <clears throat> so we are jumping on to the first word for today and the first word will be taken by uh, would you like to be honest you can do it, you can do it. oh okay, I did. so the first word will be taken by my mommy um the first talk by coach i call her mommy remy um boje evangelist remy bangboje a marriage counselor teacher of god's word script writer drama minister film producer film director and an entrepreneur she is the president of the treasure in you publications and film production a ministry that focuses on marriage and home building mission she is the visioner of Stay and Stick Together, Sweet Home, Building Woman, Becoming a Man, Miami World Network, and Adirami Counseling Center, and online marriage counseling and seminar programs. She hosts a weekly marriage seminar live on Facebook tagged My Home, My Building Project, an avenue to encourage and sensitize women on the need to keep their homes well, according to Titus chapter 2, verses 3 to 5 and also to encourage the singles on the need to trust God completely for their spouse and build godly marriage. She is married to Pastor Ademola Bangboje for over 26 years, still counting and are blessed with wonderful children. Please join me as we welcome Evangelist Remy Bangboje. Let's pray. Father, <laughs> Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this program. We thank you for our mothers. We thank you for our mamas. We thank you for everybody. We thank you for our uncles, our aunties, our beautiful, lovely, uh, 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 mommy, mommy, Jared. Ah, Father, we thank you for the wonderful twins, the Jared twins. We thank you for everybody, all the participants. We pray, Lord, inspire us in Jesus' name. Please, for us in Jesus' name. Empower us and change us for better. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. My time is limited, so straight to the point. The topic given to me is courtship, do's and don'ts. The do's and don'ts of courtship. Before we go to that, what is courtship? What is courtship? Courtship is a period where the intending couples we are the great time to meet together and discuss. Courtship is a period where they need to come together, discuss, to be able to know themselves, one, to be able to harmonize issues together, two, to be able to pray over the past negative events, in one way or the other, three, and to be able to pray for the future hope, four. Why they need to come together and pray for past negative events is because there are some issues, there are some experiences that is capable of destroying the future. There are some experiences they have done in the past. There are some actions they have done in the past 
that is capable of destroying their future. Therefore, they have to come together so as to discuss it, not to be ashamed, to open up and tell each other so as to pray about it, so as to destroy it. For example, assuming you have impregnated a lady before, and a, lady, a sister now, assuming you have aborted before, they will have the capacity to come in through that negative mistake. Through that mistake you have done in the past, devil has the power, the legal ground to come in and truncate your future. Praise the Lord. That is why you have to come together and open up. In the course of discussion, in the course of opening up to each other, you are building friendship. You are building love. And you are building trust. Praise the Lord. Building okay. friendship. Yes, you are building friendship. You are building love. And you are building trust. When you open up to each other. Praise the Lord. You can engage in courtship. There is a, a, a prerequisite. Who are the people that, are, that, are, that should go into courtship? Number one, you have to be born again. So has to hear the word of God. So as to hear the word of God. May I quickly use this opportunity to beg you, to plead with those who are yet to be born again. Give your life to Jesus. What is the meaning of being born again? To be born again simply means God is taking you from the kingdom of darkness to, the, to his own kingdom. God is changing your nature from nature of sin to nature of Christ. God is changing your mentality. God is changing you to his own nature so that you can hear him. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 26 to 27 says, my sheep heareth my voice. I know them and they follow me. That means if you are a child of God, you must hear your father speaking. He must know you, you must know him. And you must follow him. Praise the Lord. Having known God, now that you are a child of God, now that you are his friend, you'll be able to hear him when he's leading you to that brother or to that sister. Courtship is quite different from dating of today. Let us look at the life of um, Joseph and Mary. That's going to be our case study. Praise the Lord. Um, Joseph and Mary, what happened? In the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. Which says, this is how the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I want us to take note of that statement, engaged. Mary was engaged to Joseph. And they come together as husband and wife. Before the Geshe period, and in those days, after the mindset of God, once you enter into that worship, it is a prerequisite to marriage. Court meant for fun, fear, as it is being done today. Courtship is the prerequisite to marital journey. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said, before the marriage took place, she was still a virgin. She became pregnant through the Holy Ghost. Joseph, to whom she engaged, was a right man and did not know, and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement. But what happened? The Bible said, God sent angel and tell Joseph to put away Mary, your wife. Hello. So for you to be in courtship, it has to be 
It has to be mar with marriage in view. Hallelujah. You have to be born again. You have to hear from God. Praise the Lord. Let me quickly look, uh, let us quickly look at the differences between courtship and dating. It's, it's a kind of orientation that God is giving his own children for marriage. It is a meeting to play, it's for fun. That's why you see some people, a brother, a, a guy will tell a lady that I like you. I, I, I don't mind going out with you. I love you. And the lady will say, okay, let's see how it goes. To the kingdom children, to the children of God, that is not the way. That is not the style. Praise the Lord. That is why they do dating for fun. Just to play. Just to know each other. Just to hang out. Just to go to Babish. Just to go to swimming pool. Number two, courtship is established in the scriptures. And we have seen it in the book of Matthew, chapter one, that um, Joseph and Mary were in courtship. Number three, courtship, whereas dating is not established in the scripture. Number three, courtship creates a sense of seriousness towards preparing for the future. Courtship creates a sense of seriousness towards preparing for future. We are not, there is no serious plan in dating. Number four, there is high disciplinary measure. We have high disciplinary measure when it comes to courtship because during your courtship, as children of God, you are under discipline. You are under authority. You are under men of God that are guiding you and under the Holy Spirit that is guiding you. That's why I say there are, uh, there are high disciplinary measures to tame you, to tame this flesh. You see, if you are friends before courtship, if you are brethren, brothers and sisters in the fellowship, you play together, you just together, you pray together, you go out together, you walk together. There is no feeling, there's no emotional feeling. But the moment you are in courtship, my dear children, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, these emotional feelings will begin to rise up. That is why you must allow the Holy Spirit to help you to tame the emotional feeling, to bring down this flesh to caution this flesh, to discipline this flesh. Praise that. Also, caught you by the grace of God, under the anointing of God, under the authorities, scriptural authorities, spiritual men of God, it will help you to tame your flesh until the appointed time. We are not in dating. There is nothing like that. Dating will even promote fornication. Because how can you go to a swimming pool after discussing playing? Half naked. Somehow, somehow you eat. Before you know it, one thing will happen. Then the emotional feelings will trigger. Praise the Lord. Number five, courtship and courtship you strive to please God. Since you are always mindful of where you will continue to please God until the appointed time and in future. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want to uh, uh, speak too much into what she's saying. So she's made a statement when she talked about the difference between relationship, um, friend, friendships, no. people together, fellowships, <laughs> and all that in relation to then courtship. And then she said that um, when it is just a fellowship and it's just a relationship, at that point in time, there might not be any feelings. Mm. There might not be anything. Mm. But then the debate I wanted to first bring up, first of all, was in those gatherings, is that where... Is it, is it, or let me say, let me put it, let me phrase it this way. Mm -hmm. Is it okay for the feelings to erupt in those gatherings or <laughs> it's only going to be when the Lord says? 
Mm-hmm. Yes, give me. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, no. No, the reason why I'm asking is because, uh, like, you know what she said in those gatherings, there are no feelings. But then there mm-hmm. will be a lot of people who will definitely ask have questions about, yes. oh, there is so 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 brother, or, mm-hmm. you know, there is so so thing that I feel for so 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 brother. What do I do in that situation? These are the kinds of questions that we're going to be yeah. tackling today. I really don't want to yes, even exactly. dive into such, and I don't want to speak too much into the message that she is preaching. I want her to make sure she finishes it before we go into the comments that we have on that. But I just wanted to bring out that that line of thought that this is something that a lot of people have yeah. questions on, on today. On. <laughs> and yeah, it's going to be... We are, we are, with everything that she's saying, I'm enjoying myself. I'm having a nice time. Okay, and, then, taking notes. and I hope we're taking notes. Yes, because we are taking notes. <laughs> yes. yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> asking on behalf of some, of people. some people you know i told you that right? maybe, this kind of question maybe no feelings but attraction but attractions thank you bumi i didn't you wrong maybe no feelings possible. but attraction then we're now going towards everything feelings and attraction, and attraction. Mm. questions for the day <laughs> <laughs> during, <laughs> during the talk show or during the uh during the panel discussion there's mm. going to be room for questions yes. and answers so there, there are already questions, questions are be... so everybody <laughs> just get ready for that okay uh let's see mom is still if someone is asking is there an age, age limit between, between partners <laughs> ah questions are already coming in wait see why patience see why i don't want to i didn't want to bring up <laughs> no 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 please everybody do like this <laughs> we, we are still on to uh mommy uh remy bambodge's session. Uh, session so we want it to be done and then after that we're going to have a short video <laughs> we're going to have a short video and then uh, so many things still to we can even address some of the questions that we have here like the one like the one i have caused i have caused the question so someone asked that is there a, a, an age limit between partners that is between two potential uh relationship partners is there an age limit is there an age you can say this brother is too old for me this sister is too young for me or vice versa what's the age limit please do share with us a teenager <laughs> no not the age bracket age <laughs> limit. No, I get it, I get it. don't do this now <laughs> so yes is there an age limit between i, I think there's an age limit to be honest because mm. to be there are some people that age in number number wise age mm-hmm. they are mature yeah while some others where age is just like a number they're not mature so i don't think age is a factor a serious factor it's, it's not supposed to be one of the major things you look out for that this person must be 10 years older than me mm, five years yeah. older than me no yeah. if other yeah. things are checked if god is leading you your goals and vision aligns mm. and then maybe the age is what i mean age is not really really a factor mm. to be honest uh because just like you said you said the statement that there, there's there, there are certain people who are of a certain age and their maturity is of a different age so it's not really about the number of the age. Mm-hmm. We have some people who are technically of marriageable age, but their maturity isn't tallying with, with that, that marriageable age. age. Mm-hmm. For so, so for such people, there's a level of maturity they need to get to. Same thing works with guys, um, boy, uh, men, y- young men. <laughs> when you say, oh, you want a man that is of social age, if he's of this social age and the qualities that he's supposed to bring to the table as someone who's ready to get married, he doesn't yet have those qualities then. Age is, age is still one of the factors that should never be considered yeah. here. So in terms of gap, of there are a lot of other factors that is, they are aside from age. the age factor. But there isn't an age limit as except, what's the except, Seth? The except case? in a very, very extreme situation that we have to say, please be sure <laughs> that you heard from God. <laughs> but you know, so yeah. Uh, so someone is also asking how to handle marriage watchers. Those who will haunt you with... <laughs> The I with the when are you getting married? <laughs> She's laughing because she can relate. Uh, Abby? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so serious, but of course, you attend your friend's wedding and they'll be like, We'll come and eat your own I'm wife too. Yeah, we'll so good. Or where is the brother? When are we coming for your own wedding? Mm-hmm. And then imagine if the sister is already feeling pressured. That is extra prayer. Mm-hmm. Extra. Mm-hmm. So, how do you deal with me? Huh? You just spoke like you, you, did later. you didn't give an answer. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, you have to be content with the phase you are in. Mm. If you are content in your in your present phase, and mm. yeah, I'm talking to the singles. Yeah. As okay. a single person, you would not such comments would not really get to you. You just say, uh, Ma, 
in the right time very soon just say very soon very soon <laughs> mm. just tell them very soon ma very soon because in the society this in the society we are in sorry mm -hmm. in the society we are in it might be difficult to say those people will never come to oh you. they will definitely it's a, it's, a, it's also a cultural thing you know where they see something i'm done and then they automatically feel it's a compliment to ask for your yeah, own to you know true. but then just like you said first of all the contentment of who you are you have to but if 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 you have not sorted out that issue in your yes. own heart, external forces it's will true. put it's you in it to cripple oh you so you have to first of all balance this thought in your mind First of all, who are you and how is your standing with God? How is your relationship with God? When those things are solid, mm -hmm. no matter what anybody is saying, that doesn't tally with what God has already said about your life, mm -hmm. you just wave it off. It's also very similar to someone waiting on God for a child. And then someone is coming and saying one other thing, one other thing. If, if the pressure, you know, and it's on several other things. For guys, yeah. it could be your mate has gotten a car. <laughs> Where is your own car? You understand? So if if you are if you are not if you are not solid in your work with God, yeah. it will be very easy to be tossed to and fro oh, yes. <laughs> by the waves of uh comments out there. So more than anything, the same thing with social media when people say things about you on social media that is capable of getting you upset. Mm -hmm. the, the the how it's how your mind reacts to it determines how renewed your mind is. Mm -hmm, that makes mm -hmm. any sense. So the way you, the the level of renewalness of your mind determines how how repellent it yeah. will be to comments that are capable of causing yeah. issues I in just, your life. I just wanted to add as well that be um <clears throat> let God be your number one. Let me like have that intimate relationship with God where He satisfies you because if you're content in your relationship with God, it will be hard for you to you know be pressured to want to you know fall into the pressure of people asking oh what is this or even from others it, just your friends around you getting married is enough pressure to be honest mm. nobody needs to come and ask you when are you getting married the pressure of your friends getting married is enough so just have that strong let god complete you because the truth is no man or woman can complete you mm. so let god be the one that completes you so when you 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 are assured of your completeness in god trust me you'll be fine because you know that he works all things out for your good and mm. in his perfect timing Mm. yours will come mm. so just relax chill have fun enjoy enjoy the single phase enjoy have fun trust me because there are some responsibilities yes. come to your table come oh my god you <laughs> you will miss your single days once in a while <laughs> so someone asked a question is there a specific timeline on how long cutting should go on before getting married you know i like these kinds of questions <laughs> when they say can we date for seven years Years. can we a date for 10 things. years you know <laughs> you give her the engagement ring and it stays for 9 10 you know or some people just say i love you i want to marry you let's marry next month <laughs> is that it is that possible yes i mean that's let's marry that's... Next <laughs> no so i think yeah most churches because i mean if you want to get married you have to go through the church counseling and everything yeah so most churches have a time frame mm -hmm. the minimum time that you are meant to use in courtship before you move on to say okay let's now walk down the aisle and become one mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yes then <clears throat> so is there a, is there is there a, is there a proper time frame to say that this is a good enough time for us to so court? What, what do you think Ah. Oh, oh. Ah. I, sh I should give my own answer. Yes, you sure you answer. want to give me an answer? Mm -hmm. Honestly, I thought I was going to come here to just <laughs> here and here and here and here. But okay, fine. So the question is, is it what's the right time frame to say that you are cutting? Right now, we 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 don't usually say that this is the exact time frame that you're supposed to spend because a lot of people are cutting on different circumstances. Mm -hmm. For example, some people are cutting, however, maybe one guy is in school and he wants to finish school. And one person is maybe is in this country and he wants to come back. But like, all manner of circumstances. However, the truth of the matter is, it is not good to go into a long courtship. Yeah. So if you want to propose to a sister, you have to have had a proper plan in mind for how long this courtship is going to last. So to so avoid things like, oh, we are cutting now, but uh, it's not our fault now. Uh, we have to do this. We have to do that. If you know that you are not actually ready to get married, don't ask a sister out yet. So when we say a proper time frame for we. It was um one year, almost eleven months no, and twenty something days. Oh, before marriage. Okay. And now uh, from the I love you, sister. Say yes to me. To to the yes, I do. Yes, I do. Almost a year. Eleven months and twenty something days. <laughs> it was a year, ladies and gentlemen. 
All right. So a year is good. Two years is good. Three years probably good. But but it begins to get to that. You know, four years, five years, six years. Uh -huh. <laughs> the lower limit. The lower limit, uh, six so months. Let's say six months one, now. After a month. No, please, please. Bone of my bone of no, flesh. No, keep putting <laughs> bone somewhere first, please. Ladies, wait. The reason, the reason why we say that courtship should not be too long also is because you need to learn some things. I mean, too short. It's because you also need to learn some things about the person before you say yes to him. Mm -hmm. Yes, God has spoken, but now it's time for you to assess yes. like and what, observe. Like what you were saying, she's, she's part of the things she was talking about. Yes. The time to, you know, talk about your past. Mm -hmm. time planning. planning. Yeah. So the, I think... Yeah, she's would... back now. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so it, we are straight to... <clears throat> Straight to courtship dues. Courtship dues. Let's go to courtship dues. For easy interaction, I put it in an acronym form of five P's. Five P's. Five P's. Let's go to five P's. The first P, yeah, beautiful. The first P, during courtship, what are the things you are needed to do as a believer? In this context, in this platform, this program is meant for believer, kingdom mindset. So what are the things you need to do? We have several things, but I bring out these five major points. Number one, periodic prayer and fasting. Praise the Lord. Why do you need periodic prayer and fasting? Let now, when Daniel knew that the, and his window were open and his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knee three times a day and prayed and thank God as he did a four times. I want to I want you to underline that last statement as he did a four time. Daniel has been used to praying all the time. So when there was problem, he prayed as usual. So as a child of God, brother and sister coming together in courtship, it, it is expedient. It is necessary. In fact, I say it is compulsory that you set a time, periodic time that you meet. You know, sometimes you may not be staying in the same vicinity. Maybe you are in different location. Create time out of no time. Make it periodical. Praise the Lord. The next one, Daniel 2. In that Daniel 2, there was a problem. And Daniel said, King, give me time to go and seek God to know the interpretation of that dream. What happened? Daniel, I mean, discussed with his companions. Now that you are in courtship, you are comrade, you are companion, you are teammate, you are friend. So in the course of praying, God will open your eyes to many things. God will give you secrets. When Daniel and his companion prayed, God gave them the secret to the king's dream. God gave them the interpretation to the king's dream. So you, brother and sister in courtship, when you create time to pray all the time, God will tell you about the future. God will enlighten you. God will make it easy for you. God will open your eyes. And Jeremiah 33, which says, ask me, call upon me, and I will show you things to come. God is ready to show you your future. God is ready to show you where you are going to stay. God is ready to show you about your children. But you need to call upon God. You need to ask him. If Daniel did not ask God, God will not tell him the interpretation. Next. Number two, place of meeting for discussion and prayers. Yes, it is necessary to look for a neutral ground. In order to, to, to silence this flesh, you have to look for a neutral ground. Make use of your pastor's house, make use of the church environment, look for an entry, look for an open air that will not influence or, or bring out your emotional feelings. Praise that. Also, look for a neutral place to discuss. The next question is what are you to discuss? I mean, what are you going to discuss? Why do you need to discuss? What are the things to discuss? Number one, discuss about your positive, your previous positive experiences. Let me repeat it again. Discuss about your previous positive experiences, about the school you attend, about your ambition in life, about what you want to achieve, about your seven things you have done. The more you discuss, the more you open yourself to each other. 
as a lady, as I'm discussing with that guy, I am opening myself to him. He is opening my, is himself unto me. And we are becoming one. We are blending together. We are knowing each other. And we are building trust. We are calling God into that relationship. It is wrong and it is devilish to start that relationship, to be in courtship under pretense. Devil make use of pretense. So don't hide. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What other things do you need to discuss? Discuss about negative experiences as well. Those things that have the capacity to destroy your future. Quickly discuss it and pray upon it. Destroy it. I like this aspect very well. Maybe next time we'll discuss this aspect very well because there are some inherited causes and covenants. The brother is coming from a family. The sister is coming from a family. And in that family, you have some hereditary diseases and sicknesses. You have some demonic problems affecting your life. Don't think by hiding it, your, your future is, is secure. No. When you hide it, devil will be happy. Devil will make use of it in future. So open up and discuss. If you are coming from a polygamous home, let him know. If you are coming from a broken home, let him know. If it is your, if it is single mother that raised you, let him know. And table it before God. Because every problem from our parents have larger percentage of influencing us. Let me repeat. Every problem we inherit from our parents, physically and spiritually, in terms of sickness, have larger percentage of influencing us. So as Christian, you have to cut that demonic lineage. You have to separate yourself from that demonic lineage. You are teaming up to become a home under God. That's why you have to discuss it and pray about it. Why do you need to discuss? You have to discuss about your future projection. Now that you are going to marriage, what do you hope to do? What do you hope? What do you plan to do? I want to use this opportunity to, uh, to, to cite the example of uh, Damilola Mike Bamiloye when he, when he was sharing his testimony about his wife. He said, we discuss about our projection. And he encouraged, they encouraged each other to, to, to keep certain amount of money for the publication of, Bemi, of that book, Bemi, which they distributed during their wedding. During the reception, I was there. I got that book. My daughter was there. She got that book. Can you imagine that that uh, the, 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 the foundation they laid for their marriage? If they did not discuss it and agreed and prayed, God will not bless them. God will not open the door for them. So during your courtship, discuss meaningfully. Discuss the word of God. Discuss your future. Discuss your past and table it before God. Let him see it. If necessary, always go with your paper, your, your, your diary and pen to write it down. Because it's about your future. It's about your life. Praise the Lord. Now, before I go further, say advantage of praying, periodic prayer. Advantage of periodic prayer. It will give you hunger for righteousness. When you pray periodically, you will not be pushing that brother into sin. You will not be asking for sin. You will not be asking for what God hates. There will be hunger for righteousness. You will be hungry to keep your home, that future home. You will be hungry to hear from God. Advantage of periodic prayer. You will know the mind of God. You will know what to do and what not to do. No, marriage is an intentional effort. What you hear from God, follow it. Praise the Lord. Number three, point three, people and places to visit. Don't just visit for visiting sake. There are people that God will use to bless your life. There are people that will speak something to you and it will be meaningful to your future marriage. There are people that need to know. Your uncle that need to know. Your aunties that need to know. Your parents that need to know. You have to visit. But you have to pray and hear when to go, where to go. Praise the Lord. You'll be saying, I'm too strict, Abby. I'm not too strict. If you want your marriage to stand, to proclaim Jesus Christ, to showcase Jesus Christ, to preach Jesus Christ, you have to lay the foundation where? 
So when the angel came to visit Mary, after the discussion, Mary visited Elizabeth. Why? Mary had it from the angel statement. That gave Mary the option to visit Elizabeth. And she stayed there for three months. And I'm sure that three months, she must have learned something. So there are places to go. There are places, people to visit. And God will guide you because they need to bless you. They need to pray. They need to guide you. They need to encourage you. Praise the Lord. Point four, point four, point four. Planning about wedding. That has to do with your boss. That has to do with your pocket. You have to plan according to your boss, according to your pocket. Even if you have the money, plan wisely. That is why that point number one is necessary. Periodic prayer and fasting will guide you on all other things to do. Point number five, fasting. Now, personal preparation for marital journey. I like this point very well. Personal preparation. For the fact that God is saying you should go and marry does not mean you should not have clothes to wear. Especially you guys that are pastors. For the fact that God is saying you should go and marry does not mean you should not have room over your roof. So, as you are planning to get married as a man, at least have one room. If you are starting with one room, let God help you have one room. Get out of your parents' place. Don't hide under your parents. Get that one room, one tiny bed, at least start with. And as a lady, for the fact that you want to go and marry, you don't have a pot of soup, it is wrong. Have something, no matter how small. Prepare yourself. And I put this as S-E-F-M-C, spiritual preparation, emotional preparation, financial preparation, maturity, and character molding preparation. Your character means a lot because you are going into another cycle, another fear, another stage of life where you will manage people. So your character must be in check. Don't say, oh, this is how we do in our house. We shout at each other. No. When you are going to marriage, during that courtship, let your tongue come down. Let that naughty character change. Praise the Lord. Let quickly go to the don'ts. Don't. I'm watching time too. Don't. I put it in uh, uh, 5S. Stand against evil suggestion. When that sister is suggesting evil, when that brother is suggesting evil, stand against it. Although it's the will of God, yes, he can make a mistake. She can make a mistake. That is why you have to create that periodic prayer and fasting. So as to check one another. You have to check one, you have to check him. I, she has to check you. He has to check you. Praise the Lord. Next, number two. Stand against wasteful spending. Even if you are working in Chevron, even if your father is Bill Gates, even if your father is Buhari, even if your father is the president, you have to be prudent in spending. Stand against wasteful spending. God hates wasteful spenders. Stand against it. Next, stand against jo I mean, breaking joint decision. I purposely use this picture because I want to use to explain. Stand against breaking joint decision. Once God has led you to take decision over a particular time, pray and agree and do it. Don't, don't, don't break it without the consent of the other. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The next one, stand against taking each other for granted. Look at this picture. They arranged to meet. The brother was frowning. No, he's a pastor now. He has to show that he's a man. Look at this sister trying to make him happy. It's not like both of you are in a relationship. You have to be friends. You have to laugh. You have to smile. During the time you want to see each other, be friendly. Make yourself happy. Pray. Discuss. Smile. Don't, don't frown. Don't put pressure on that sister, brothers in the house. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The next one, stand against forcing or coercing. Don't force him to do what is not good, what is not scriptural. Don't force her to do what you don't like. Let me stop here because of my time. Let's pray. Father Lord, next, next. Any question, please drop your question while we pray. Drop your question.
drop your question. Praise the Lord. Father Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this short message. It's short, but you know how to expand it, how to explain it in the heart of your children. First, I pray for baptism of Holy Ghost. When they have Holy Ghost, when they have the spirit of God, they will do it right. I pray that these brothers, these sisters in courtship, they will do it right according to your plan, according to your way, in the name of Jesus Christ. Adam and Eve have no opportunity for courtship. Isaac and Rebecca have no opportunity for courtship, yet they follow the manual of God. I pray for all these, our children, we will open their eyes to the manual you have for them, and they will follow in the name of Jesus Christ. And as many that are in courtship, they are just doing it for fun. They don't even know what they want. They don't even know themselves. Some people don't know themselves. Not to talk of knowing the future. I pray by the virtue of this program, you will bring them to the reality of what you have for them to the reality of what marriage is in the name of Jesus Christ. And to those who are just playing around, I pray that you correct them. You bring them back to sense. Sense in the word of God. They will hear your voice in the name of Jesus Christ. And as many that are yet to be born again, Lord, the spirit of hearing your word. The Bible says, my children hear my word. The Bible says, no one can come unto me except, except God draw that person. Today, 3rd of June, draw this one's nine. Let them know you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Mommy, for that wonderful message. She gave a lot of solid points. So many solid points. Uh, if I if I should begin to recall some of them again, we're going to take some time. But I was able to recall, I was able to jot down some of them. Um uh, about she talked about the prayer and fasting planning, fighting against the suggestion, wasteful spending. Uh, breaking the joint decision and so many other points and I'm, I'm sure but from the message that she has given she has answered a lot of questions I'm sure a lot of people would have uh, yeah so but it, it, which which part poked you which part poked you is it out of the two I just want to answer to because she used our pictures severally <laughs> and the fact that she used our pictures something else to that I was when <laughs> say you don't coerce yeah. to make a decision True. and then she use a picture of this one so <laughs> i like the first one where i mean where she talked about you know making your partner you know smile like having mm. proper conversations and not mm. going against each other mm. so that that one was really good it was did very fast doing our coaching oh yes we did we did of course we did i'm sure you forgot it <laughs> ah, i forget ah no we fa we fasted let me make sure we fasted all right. Yeah. Let us go over to uh, the next item on the program. Uh, let me let you do the honors. What is the next item on the program? program. So we're going to be having a short skit right about now. Short skit. By the windows. You'll be giving us a short uh, video. And um, after that, we're going to be going into their short talk. Yeah. They are going to be speaking to us. So I think it's just it's just lovely that we get to see a video from them mm -hmm. before we have a word from, from them. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's my first time of watching that. It's actually my first time yeah. watching that too. Yeah, so that was a beautiful yeah, message. Great. Beautiful message from yeah. the Winlows, as always. Yeah, always. They've been a blessing to us. <laughs> With the short skits and also with the full end movie, I saw people in the comments. <laughs> so tells me, no, no, they kept saying, uh, Mio Kuku -she, Mio Kuku -she, Mio Kuku -she. I let it go, let me your Kuku check check go. This is not Mio Kuku -she -she. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, we have the uh, introduction for the windows before they come up to give us um, their talk. And Willie and Ohizo Jekere are ah, the windows. They met and became friends a few years ago while acting and writing drama in their church drama group. They got married to each other and continued spreading the love of God through skits, stage plays, movies, and other forms of illustration. They now travel within and outside Nigeria, painting the Jesus picture so vividly that it has won them numerous awards and brought recognition back to the mini-drama community in Christianity. They mentor and inspire thousands of married and unmarried couples worldwide. 
Their relationship series is unrivaled. They host their popular comedy show, The Window Show, every February. They also have a weekly Friday series on their internet TV called Ask the Windows. The Windows also host a campus tour every year tagged MRC, My Relationship Conference. They are also authors of the recent best-selling book titled His Ex, Her Ex, and Blind Date. In 2021, they were nominated among the 100 most influential church persons in Nigeria by WhyNiger.com. They've been married for 10 years and are blessed with a wonderful daughter called Aima. They also serve as lead pastors at The Voltage, a vibrant church expression of the Windows ministry. Welcome, the Windows. Good evening, Jima. Good evening, Good evening, Tolu. Good evening, man. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mommy, Gloria. Thank you, everyone, for having us this evening in Nigeria this evening. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm so sorry. My husband is unavoidably absent, but somehow, probably before the end of the meeting, he'll join in. Yeah. So thank you so much, everyone, for having for having us this evening. This evening, Nigeria, Nigeria time. Thank you. So Quickly, I wouldn't even spend much time. I have 20 minutes, so I'll just um, I'll just um, give a brief um, charge, more like it, or a, or a brief talk. All right. So I've been, I mean, we've been asked to teach on do's and don'ts. We've been asked to discuss on do's and don'ts. Okay. So oh, I came out from a trip today. Anyways, that aside. So most times when we when when we go for relationship meetings, people ask, hey, "What can you do? What shouldn't you do in a relationship?" and all of that. Sometimes people ask because they want to learn. Some people ask because they just ask. They have actually made up their mind actually on what they really want to do. But nevertheless, boundaries it's very important. Like it's so essential. Before I go into that, let's just say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for this chat. We ask, Lord, that you take absolute control. Renew mindsets. Renew mindsets. Transform men today in this gathering in the name of Jesus. And so boundaries is very essential. Um, living in this part of the world, Nigeria, I realized that um, there is no... Um, there is no size of fence that's the same. There is no fence that's the same in size, in length, in height, rather. So everyone has to determine, you know, how they see, how they want to build their fence. Everyone determines their level of security in Nigeria, you know. So my fence in my house is different from my neighbor's fence, you know, and all of that. So we don't really have um things like regulation you know like in the western world you know so what i'm trying to say with this instance is you know i've realized that boundary you know um determining boundary in a relationship is dependent on the picture you want to see about your marriage determining boundary is dependent on the picture you want to see about your marriage the picture you want to see about your marriage you do you, I, I believe that all of us have a picture of a kingdom marriage. You have a picture of a successful marriage, you know? Okay. So just like houses, like you, there's no fence regulation in Nigeria. So everybody has their different fence they build. So my fence is different from my neighbor's fence. And some people don't even do fence. Some people do, some people do, um, some people do sliding gates. Some people don't. So it depends. It depends on what you want to see. And that's so, sometimes this measurement of fence or the kind of gate you put in your house is also determined by what you have in your pocket. But above all, what I'm just trying to emphasize is, you know, it's dependent on the picture. So if I have a kind of house, if I want a kind of security, the picture of security I want, it's dependent. Sorry, the picture of security, security I want is actually dependent, you know, on, sorry, the kind of fence I want depends on the kind of security I want in my house. So moving forward, what I'm trying to say in all of this, my grammar, is that the your boundary determining boundaries dependent on the kind of relationship you want to build on the kind of marriage you want to build you know and when you have this picture there is a 
pattern that you want to see in your relationship. There is a pattern that you want to see in your marriage. The Bible says, blessed are the pure, for they shall see God. So in other words, you know, in other words, how much of God I want to see in my marriage would de is dependent. How much of God I want to see is it's it's sorry. The, my boundaries de it depend on the how much of God I want to see in my marriage. I want to see in my relationship. Now going forward, um, before we got when we said about starting our relationship, you know, we told we told we we told ourselves that we want to be role models. Yes, that's what we went. That's what we wanted to see. Without knowing the windows, I wasn't even acting, so it has nothing to do with acting. So I wasn't even, I was never acting, I studied about chemistry. I never had a dream to even act in my life. You know, although I remember one time when I was in my campus fellowship, a pastor came, they invited a guest minister. So while I was seated, where I was seated, the guest minister was speaking, and then somehow when they're praying, he just had a word of prophecy and he pointed to somebody at the back. It was like, You, you there, you there, you know, you're going to become a global actress. So me, I turned, thinking it was my neighbor at the back or somebody behind. And it was like, you turning, you are going to become a global. I've never, I didn't join drama department. I didn't even have intention. I didn't think it wasn't a thought. I didn't dream it. You know, all of that. And of course, I, I, I had different kinds of toasters, you know, when I was single, you know, different kinds, different spec, different motive and all of that. I never was looking for, I wasn't looking for who is, who was a drama minister. I didn't look for it even after hearing that word of prophecy because I wasn't interested. And two, I am what is most important about choosing rights is that you are sinking with the will of God. That's it. You marry the will of God, not trying to look for who to marry. You know, so I wasn't interested in the word, not like I wasn't, but I wasn't, I wasn't desperate because a man of God said, You are going to marry, you're going to you're going to become a global actor. I just stayed there on my own thing. I didn't even join a drama department either. It was just sometimes maybe the drama HOD was my friend. He would say, Okay, I show my assist with props. It wasn't my dream. I was a biochemist. And me, I wanted to travel out to do my public health and productive health nutrition. You know what I mean? And there, there, there am I, here am I, and I'm married and and now I'm not acting drama. What am I saying all these things? We told ourselves we we're going to become married mother. That was the picture we had about our marriage. And the picture we had now enabled us to set boundaries. Because when you want to model something, there is a behavior. If the picture you have about your marriage or your relationship is that you want to model a lifestyle, there is actually a behavior. If you say that, oh, you want to model the life of God, you know, so that people can see there is a behavior. So we, we wanted a godly marriage. We told ourselves that we want to be role models. And so therefore, we were intentional about it because it's not necessary laying of hands that deliver you why it's part of it. It is your intentionality, intentionality for growth, intentionality to see the picture you have about yourself, your attitude, the attitude you have to put in place so that the picture you have about your marriage can be revealed can be shown to all so we're very intentional so when we met we told ourselves that's what we told ourselves and so we felt for told ourselves that these are the things we would not do so i'm going to emphasize on the don't what you shouldn't do what you shouldn't do remember i said we picture the bible says in genesis chapter 2 it says god told adam he said you can eat of every tree of the garden but there was a particular tree you shouldn't eat now very that's true was an, a very interesting one he says you must not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you must not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil now what he's told me is that something can be good but there is an there, it, it can be evil to you yeah something can be good but it can be evil to you so what do i mean that brings me to my first don't when I, when I hear boundaries, the first thing that comes to people's mind many of the times is, the first thing that comes to people's mind many of the times is, um, let's not have sex. You know, sex, of course, it's biblical, it's scriptural. You know, we shouldn't have sex before we get married. Primarily sex is a sin. Oh, yes, it is the truth. It is a sin. But let me take you down to 1 Corinthians 7. You know, primarily sex is a sin. That's, it's, this one is, everybody knows this. Anybody that asks that question, whether should you have sex, that person, something is wrong with the person somewhere, somehow. You know, the person just doesn't realize that person may just need deliverance. Okay, so now, if you, if, if many times we just say, okay, primarily sex is, but I and my husband, we are very intentional. And I realized that if you go to First Corinthians 7, I'm reading from Message Bible very quickly. Now, getting down to the questions you asked in your letter to me first, 
Is it a good thing to have sexual relations? This is not sexual intercourse. It is sexual relations. So, in other words, as much as premarital sex is a sin, there are other things you can do that are related to it. So, as much as premarital sex is a sin, there are other things that you can find yourself doing that are relatives of sexual intercourse. Certainly, and uh, Paul went down, verse 2, certainly, but only within a certain context. Sexual relations is the word, not sexual intercourse. It is good for a man to have a wife and for a woman to have a husband. Sexual drives are strong, but marriage is strong enough to contain them and provide for a balanced and fulfilling sexual life in a world of sexual disorder. The marriage bed must be a place of neutrality. The husband seeking to satisfy his wife. The wife seeking to satisfy her husband. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your right. Marriage is... Uh, my, anyway, my point of emphasis is now, the first verse. The first verse, that's verse one. Now, getting at the questions you asked in your letter. So, Apostle Paul was pr providing an answer. First, is it a good thing to have sexual relations? Now, when you're my husband, met. Uh, yeah, while we wait for her to... While we wait for her to come back, let's reflect a little bit on the last thing that she said. That yes, everybody knows, or everybody should know, every normal person should know that there, there shouldn't be, you shouldn't have sex in a relationship. But then sex has siblings. Because a lot of people actually know what to do. But then what not to do is where they begin to question is this allowed? Is this not allowed? Is that allowed? And I like the fact where she said um, having a view of what your relationship is going to stand for because you know she, she used the example of um different fences yes so that you want to build <laughs> you can tell me what you do and what you don't do mm. and she also mentioned of how some things may be good for yeah. others but evil for you to do yeah so, and she said uh, the fact that she has what she did now well yeah. she was about to enter a relationship yeah. oh, she's thank you so i've, I've um, actually had to stop the video so just so that you can actually hear me very clearly. All right, so let's go down. So I was, I was talking about First Corinthians 7, verse 1. So many times when we talk about boundaries, first thing that comes to mind is premarital sex is a sin, and it's true, it's a sin. That's the truth, it's biological. But then again, like I said, I and my husband, we had a picture, we're very intentional, that we wanted to be, we, we, we wanted our marriage to be a role model without having the windows and all of that. Anyways, so First Corinthians 7, verse 1 says, now getting down to the question you asked in your letter to me, First, is it a good thing to have sexual relations? Now, it, it is not sexual intercourse. It's sexual relation. It is not sex. So what it means is that whilst premarital sex is a sin, there are other things that you can do in your relationship that are relatives of sex. There are other things that you can do in your relationship that are, re that are cousins of sexual intercourse. There are other things that you can do in your relationship that are siblings of sex. So we have to sit down and carefully analyze now, I want to emphasize on the don'ts because many times the do's don't really count if you have a picture. So let's emphasize on the don'ts, what we shouldn't do, what you shouldn't do, especially when you have a picture like I had, like we had. Now, the first thing we told ourselves that there are hogs who will not hog. Yes, hog has level. You know, I, I, I understand that. And someone might be like, hey, this is rigidity. Yeah, listen, the Bible says that this is the will of God as sanctification. This is the way First Thessalonians 7, I think. Yes, this is the will of God as sanctification. No, First Thessalonians 4, yes. It says it is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality. So what this means is yet I become irresponsible when I don't fulfill the will of my father because it is God's will that I should be sanctified. So I must, I am, I must be intentional enough that if there's any journey that I know that will take me, that will land me into sexual immorality. I should be intentional. I'll be, I should be too conscious about if I have to be rigid eh, to pursue, then I should be rigid. So we told ourselves that, you see, to have when my husband said, you know, you're a fine lady. I'm a man of God. Yes, I know, but I'm a man. When I see there's a way. So there are hogs we will not hog. There's no need to do 360 degree hog. When we know that even a 180 or 90 degree can bring a lot of um, stuff, can stir up things. Like I said, is the picture we had about our marriage. Everybody has a picture. Number two, we told ourselves one of the don'ts were because we're talking about sexual relations. The truth is that we can't say a lot. Many of the times when you ask people, how did you get involved in primary so when they start telling you the journey, you realize that if they had just avoided some of the things that they did, even though it was rigid or it might look boring, 
they would not have been they would not have indulged in premarital sex. Number two, we told ourselves that we will not kiss. And yes, you know when I go for a conference, people ask this question a lot. It's, at this crucial Don't point, during the talk, what oh, about? we must hear this crucial point. We must hear this crucial point. So number two, we told ourselves that we would not many when you go for conferences, singles like to ask, is kissing a sin? Listen, they would that ah, it's not in the Bible. Where is it in the Bible that is categorically written that kissing is a sin? I mean, I have not seen where it is written clearly in scripture that kissing is a sin, but I have, ex I have read out 1 Corinthians 7 verse 1, right? I haven't seen where it is. You know, just like there's no way in the Bible where you should bait, you want to have your back. It's not written anywhere. There's no way where you should, where you should wear roll on. There's no way where you should spray perfume, but you know it's good for you, right? Yeah, so we, we talked about, I, I talked about in the Garden of Eden, when Adam when 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 Adam was placed in the Garden of Eden, God told him, said, you can eat of all of the tree, but there's this tree that you should not eat. It is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the tree has mixture. The tree has mixture. It has good and it has evil. The knowledge of good, so good knowledge, but evil can come out of it. Now, what does this mean? It means that, see, as long as there's nowhere where baiting is a sin, there's nowhere where others, when you bought keke, your tricycle, when you bought buses, when you bought train, when you bought, there's nowhere, you sh there's nowhere it's written that you should bought all those things. What am I trying to say? It's that there are lifestyles, there are styles you live that is only wise. It, you don't need to just see it. it. It doesn't need to be stated, but you have to live it. Because, like I said, Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see. So when you know that there are depths of God you want to see in your relationship, you want to see in your mind, there are sacrifices you will have to pay. So is kissing a sin? The question I always ask when people ask me is that, is kissing wise for you? Is it wise for you to kiss? And when you kiss, are you going to be having your hands at the back? No, let's be honest. When you kiss, are you going to have your hands at the back? Are you are you going to kiss like probably publicly or in an each where you lie the person on the counter? You know the truth. So when you know that this would temper with your sanctification, it's better to avoid it. So there is no way in the Bible where kissing is a sin. And let's go down to something. You realize that when the betting of something, the um the there was a revelation of the things that the mom should do. Okay? All right, so if you look at something, there are things that was demanded from his mom that he, the mom should not do. She don't. She shouldn't drink wine. You know, when he gives, when when she gives birth to him, he must not shave his hair. Those things are not evil. That's the truth. I mean, the Nazarites were doing that. They were not. They were used to it. They, it was their customary practice. But because there are things that God will demand from you for your sanctification and you will need to do it not because it's bad not because it's, it's written somewhere in scripture that is a sin but because of your sanctification because of what he wants to do with you because of the picture you want people to see you will have to do it so something had to go through that road the mother had to go through certain things because because of where who something was going to be when he when he when when he was betted who something was going to be when he was betted so it is not it is not a thing with is kissing a sin it is is kissing wise for you when you how do you feel down do you do you feel you, you feel yourself shaking or sometimes you can sleep and you just imagine best if he can just grab you that kind of thing. Oh my God, you 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 envision this brother, you envision this sister on the bed. Immediately you just oh, you know you know how it is. Like you know you know the the shivers that go down your spine and all of that. Number three, one of the things we had to do was we had to we had to work on the time where we had to see. We had to work on the time where we had to see. So when we knew there was a time where, because you have to be open to each other, you know, secrecy, secrecy hides, seeing heights and secrecy. So where we, one of the, one of our rules in our relationship was that we're going to be very transparent. Like, so I remember times where my husband used to travel down because we're not in the same city. I was staying in Wari. I was working in Wari. My husband was in Benin. So if you know Benin, Wari, very well in Nigeria, you, I think it's like an hour drive, you know, and all that. So, he used to come to see me, you know, that kind of thing now, uh, relationship stuff. You want to see your loved one, J. Mike and Tolu, you feel me? So we we'll always see, but it got to a point you, where you, my husband told me that, ah, he cannot, uh, 
my it got to a point where my husband was like man this thing is somehow like it's triggering something like it's making him feel like you know he can just grab me and even me too i won't lie and we had to keep a distance that's the truth we're only communicating we exchange pleasantries we're communicating in details and all of that but we had to and let me tell you something these things can only happen when they are agreed values if you don't have agreement in your values you cannot you cannot stick to these rules you can't have boundaries we're not talking about boundaries so and then let me also say something very quickly before i forget before i wrap up now you can you don't wait until your relationship before you have these boundaries Tell yourself the things you would do as a single person. Tell yourself that these are things you would not do as a single person before the man or the woman comes. Because, why am I saying so? When you don't have firmness in the kind of boundaries you want to set, when the man or woman comes, you can easily fall for compromise. You can easily, it can be compromised. So, first of all, before I even met my husband, I told myself, these are my don'ts. Like, I won't even do it. Like... I came from a broken home. My parents are separated till now. I came from a broken home. So I, in my family, there's this kind of, you know, pattern and all of that. So I knew that I wanted, I was fighting very hard to build an intentional, a godly marriage, not the kind that I saw my parents do. So it doesn't just end it, just saying it. You have to fight through living godly principles. So before I even met my husband, I told myself, I'm, I'm not going to indulge in primary I'm not going to indulge in anything that is related to sex. I'm not going to indulge in it because of where I was going to before, because of where I'm going to, I'm um, because I'm still going, you know, because of where I was going to, let me use words because then I was single and all of that. And so by the time I met my husband, by the time we talked about this, we didn't argue. When you agree on values, you don't argue. Agreement counters arguments. Agreement counters arguments. So when there is an agreement of values, can two work together except they agree? So agreement comes in. You can actually agree to this kind of boundaries when the two of you have the same mindset, the two of you have the same God you serve, the two of you have your level of consecration, the two of you understand the will of sanctification, then you'll be intentional about setting this boundary. That's the truth. So the last thing I want to say before I wrap up, it's number one, I've talked about, um, I've talked about hog. I've talked about um, not kissing, whether it's wise or not, and blah, blah, blah. Number four, I think that should be my fourth point. It's mind your environment. Now, both of us agreed on the kind of places we should be in. And even when there's a fault somewhere, we talk to ourselves. Because see, your environment, one of the problems Samson had was he went to the wrong environment. That's the truth. Environment can be a person, an association. Environment can be your music you're listening to. Your environment can be what you are hearing, what you're watching. You know, these things make up an environment. So when I talk about environment, I'm not necessarily talking about a place. You know, it could, these things, these things sum up environments. What you listen to, what you watch, the friend you keep, and the place you go to. Do you understand? So we were mindful of our environment, the place. We're mindful of the association we kept because iron sharpens iron. If you have to stick to boundaries and leave a godly marriage, then there are a set of friends you must keep. If you want to, if you want to leave a godly marriage, there are places you shouldn't be in. So, for example, I remember when I was single, there are weddings, not all weddings I attend. Yes, you know, it doesn't matter if it's my colleague. As long as I know that it will feed my flesh more than my spirit, I won't go. So because already social media platform, we already see a lot of funny things that you do will make you, in fact, you become a warrior every day because you have to fight. You have to be intentional about fighting to keep yourself. And then you now carry invitation upon yourself to when you go to places that, you know, you say because they invited, even the one they know invite you, you go. And so you carry more wahala on yourself. When you already know that every day, we already see things that we should not even see, but you don't have a choice because you, need to, you are on social media. Then why do you not have to now invite something that, you know, invites another more stuff upon yourself where you can, you can actually avoid it? So there are places we were mindful of going because when your flesh is more weighty than your spirit, you fulfill the lust of the flesh. When your flesh is more weighty, when you nourish your flesh more than you nourish your spirit, you cannot stick with the picture you have of a godly marriage. God bless you. I'm done. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much, Ma. That was very, very power packed. That was enlightening. I definitely learned a lot of things. And thank so you much, so much for hitting the nail on that um 
question of is it right to kiss or not to kiss? Because to be honest, a lot of young people ask that question. I mean, I remember during our courtship mm -hmm. <laughs> on our testimony night, <laughs> the question even came really direct. The question was, who is the be who is a better kisser between both of us? Mm. And we're like, <laughs> like better kisser about kiss we're not married. Ah. <laughs> One of the one of the rules we had, one of our boundaries was no kissing. And we mm. thank God for helping us to, you know, stand by that and uphold that. And at that point, that. we're thinking, ah, if we had even now done it now, yeah, how do we lie yeah. in the presence of to lie. <laughs> several other youth? Yes, and there are young people that are young, to yeah. To us, so. And then if you now tell the truth and say, well, I mean, you know, she's the better. We've set a standard. Oh, yeah, it, was, it, been, it, it would have been something else. But we bless God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> So that thank you done so that. much, Matt. That was very, very power packed. Those were important points that you shared. And yeah. I, I believe that a lot of people online today are taking notes. Yeah. And not just taking notes, please. Don't just be hearers, but also be doers of the word. Yeah. Put it to practice. Another important thing she said that resonated. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. We, we'll, we'll get back to it. We want mommy to quickly pray. Oh, yes. Okay. Before we sorry. run into it. Sorry, for the sake of sorry. time, because we know sure. that mommy Gloria um has another program sorry, soon sorry, yes. so she would we want her to pray for us before she goes yeah. the prayer of a mother so mommy gloria is in the house um she's here with us and she would like to pray for all the uh <laughs> the singles and the all the singles and the youths in the house uh thank you very much mommy over to you god bless you ma praise the lord hallelujah i've been enjoying myself since the beginning of this program. And I'm so grateful to our mommy, mommy Jarrett, for this wonderful, and the visual carriers in US for this wonderful uh, vision that the Lord has given us. We are grateful to God for the understanding of this, um, bringing our youth together. Yes, I will pray, but before I pray, I, we are going to pray together. I will not be the only one that will pray. So, but I have some, because I was, I mean, I have 10 minutes. So let me use my time. I don't want to pray for just two minutes or two hours. So, I mean, so let me say some things before I pray. The, from all those messages that have been coming out from Mumiremi and the Willows, and even from you, um, Joshua and Tolu, the Lord just opened my eyes to emphasize some things to our, our youths. Our, our the, the, the people that are already in the engaging, engaging couple and many others, that there are some things which we know from all those messages. The first thing I want them to see is um, from the book of Psalm, chapter 1, verse, I mean, Psalm chapter 11, verse 3. It says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? All this thing we are saying about don'ts and do's and all, the foundation is very, very important. If, if our relationship is built on a strong and solid foundation, it will affect our own lifestyle. It will affect our relationship. And it will give our hope. Many people that are talking, like the Willows now, you know, they was, she was speaking from experience based on the foundation they have in Christ. Therefore, the first prayer point, we are going to pray and make sure you pray the prayer very well. The foundation must be on Christ. That is, you must be rooted in Christ before you engage in any relationship. If you want to have a lasting joy, lasting peace, the, there is no magic to it. Jesus Christ is, this, is the foundation that is solid, that can stand, stand the test of time. So if you are here, you know, you have your foundation is not on Christ. You are not you are not following Christ. Um, you are not seriously following Christ. You are not intentional, like Sister Willow said, about your coming to Christ, about your following Christ. You are just obeying your mommy, you just want to be in the church. You are not even you don't have understanding of the God you are talking about. Even you have not even know who Jesus is. Hey, marriage is is. Let me tell you something. Marriage may be sweet, but it can only be sweet in God. When you do it in God's way, when you, when you are able to, to follow the way of God to secure your partner, 
Therefore, if you have not have a very good sound foundation, maybe you may be in the church, but you may not have the real experience of salvation. You have never, I, I was born in a Muslim family, but I know the day I gave my life to Christ. So I know many of our youth just going to church, only looking to mommy for or daddy for prayers. So we are going to pray tonight, Father, correct my foundation. I've been going to church, but I want to know you because there's a lot of things you need Christ to do in your life. He's interested in your all, all, everything about you. He's your mother, he's your father, everybody. So we are going to pray that, Father, correct my foundation. I have not even given my life to Jesus. Today, I release my life into your hand. Save me, O oh Lord. You know what is happening in your family. If you don't want to be a victim of those problems, you can correct your foundation today. Tell God, Father, touch my life. Save my soul. Marriage is more than just marry. And then it has a lot of things that God has prepared for your life. That means you will enjoy your life when you marry right. And you can only marry when you are in Christ. You will know what God is saying. Pray that, Father, touch my life. Forgive all my sins. You know what I've been doing in the past. You must all go into relationship with that lifestyle. There'll be, there'll be, there'll be accidents. Serious things can happen. So everything must be corrected. You have been messing up yourself with men before. You know many men you have engaged yourself with, even though you are in the church. Ask God to forgive. He's a merciful God. He can change everything and begin again with you. If you want a life that we glorify God, ask God to forgive you. Father Lord, we pray for as many as are, given, as are ready for you tonight. Lord, we pray for your visitation to correct the foundation of your children. Those who are giving their life to you tonight, Father, visit them mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. Let their spirit be corrected. Let them know you as their personal Lord and Savior. Reveal yourself to them, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Another one I want to talk about, the second one is your vision. When you have a solid foundation in Christ, then you will know that you are not ordinary. God created you. And he, look at that sister, sister um, our sister, the Willows. It, she never knew that drama is in her DNA, but God has already put it there. And when, because she was, he has given her life to Christ, when it was, it was time to manifest, it manifested. So your vision is important. What you see will help you in life. It will help your courtship. You, even when your vision is right, you will know, you will receive from ma the mind of God to know the person that will share your vision with you. That's exactly what I want to read up. Let, let me read it, please. Now the birth of Jesus was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph. Before they come together, she was found with a child of the Holy Spirit. That is a vision of God. She carried God's vision. That is what Mary saw, I mean, what Joseph saw in her. And again, and again, in Judges chapter 4, verse 4, and Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidot, she judged Israel at that time. You can imagine the vision of Deborah. She was made to be a judge, even as a single sister. But she was, she was connected with God to know what God has deposited in her. She became a prophetess. So as young sister, you are not just to be going to church. You must discover your, your, your purpose in life. When you are a, a, a single sister who has, who has seen the vision, look at Joseph. Joseph has the vision. He has in the palace. He knew where God was taking him. So he refused to mess up with the wife of Labrador. Many of our youth are messing up today because they couldn't see beyond where they are. And that, whereas you are, you are meant for the world. The world are waiting for your, for your manifestation. But if you don't walk right and discover your vision, you can easily be discouraged or, or, or distracted or flimsy excuses. Things that are nothing can easily move you. Therefore, you are going to pray. Open my eyes of understanding. Let me see my vision. Youth in the house, sisters and brother, pray with passion. And don't stop the prayer. That's not the end of prayer. Say, Lord God, discover. Cause me to discover my vision. Joseph discovered. He knew that he was going to the palace to deliver the word. 
I'm telling you too, you are not ordinary. You are going out there. You and your husband, you and your wife, you are going to the palace. A person of vision will not say so that for ordinary person who has no, you have no vision, who doesn't see anything. You can't just, anybody cannot just, you can't be engaged to just any man. You know, the vision will begin because that is the baby, the, the God, the, 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 the baby you carry. You carry God inside of you. The vision will direct your path. It will, it will dictate so many things about your future. And when you get your, when you receive your man or your wife, you are connected. Many things. Look at the willows. The vision connected them. And today we are, we are hearing them everywhere. That is the vision you need to pray. Pray to God, Lord, open my eyes to see my vision. Why are, you have created me, cause me to see it in the name of Jesus Christ. And the last thing I want to mention is that you must um, you must be obedient to the word of God. You see, obedient to his word will enable you to be connected to God. That word of God you carry in your hand is not to be just to be playing with. As a man of vision, you already know your vision, you want to know God has revealed to you that he will use you. That is what F. Joseph, he, he, he was able to behave according to the will of God because he had the word of God. So the word of God will connect you to God. Anytime you go into the Lord's presence, either to pray or to read the word of God, you cannot leave his presence the same. God, he said, any tree that bear fruit, he will purge. You are used thinking in the church, you are doing the whole thing of the love of God. God will keep purging you as you say in his presence. That's why you're going to pray, Lord. Give me hunger for your word. I want to keep desiring you. That is where your power is. The Bible says, how can a young man cleanse his way in this wicked world? Even when you are, when you are courtship, the word of God will guide you. Many things we cannot tell you, don't do this, don't do that. He said, the Holy Spirit you are receiving, he will teach you. You know, he said, he said, you don't even need anybody to teach you, but he will teach you to know the right thing to do. Therefore, you're going to pray, Father, I want to be hungry for you. I want to desire you. Take great time to study the Bible, the Bible, to study, to pray, and be, and be, and be, in, and be intentional about it. Keep doing it. Don't, don't pray for the day, and then till you, till you come to God, you, you wait till next year or, or next week before you pick your Bible. Make it, make it an habit to be in His presence. And as you are doing that, God will be purging you, preparing you, cleansing you to, for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the perfect will for your life. Therefore, I want to pray for us now. Father, Lord, I commit our children into your hand. Thank you for this wonderful message you have been given us. We, we are so privileged. Ah, God, we are so privileged. I pray for them today, oh God. The Bible says, if the foundation be, be destroyed, therefore, what can the righteous do? Many things have been destroyed today because many are not fully rooted in Christ. I pray for as many as I get to know you today, the power to know you, the understanding of Jesus himself, to know God, make yourself real in their life in Jesus' name. Touch their spirit. Give them a new spirit and make them your child, in, make them your children today in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, Lord, I pray that you begin to reveal your fancy, your plans for them, your vision to make them fruitful. Joseph knew his vision. He has seen the hand that he was going to the palace. He knew why God has created him. Therefore, he was able to keep himself for that vision. He was fruitful. I pray for our you said, your men shall see vision. This is the time for them to begin to see wonderful things God wants to do through them. I pray that to reveal your plans to every of our youth to be fully useful and be involved in the service of God in the, and to discover your purpose for their lives. Because empty, whoever they, they, they used to say that the devil can occupy empty hands. I pray that you yourself will occupy them, even in your vineyard, in the name of Jesus. And I both follow God. Father, we pray that you give them that hunger. Obedient to your word, as they read your word, as they study your word, as they call on you in prayer. Just like Timothy, you yourself will be able to keep them. Because the power to be strong is in you. We are all human beings. Nobody, anybody can, can fall, if not by your special grace. We pray for them, oh God. There are terrible things out there. There's many of our youth. 
but in you we have the power. We pray that strengthen them, empower them, fill them with the Holy Spirit. As they, as they call on you, you will reveal yourself to them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory and we appreciate you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Mommy. God bless you. Thank you for the prayers. We are grateful. Okay. So, on to what's the next agenda interlude. on the program? Interlude. And then after the interlude? Panel discussion. After we the address all the questions. Panel discussions. Questions. We're going to be having uh, about three people on the panel on the panel seats. Mommy, Remy, uh, the Winlows, um, you and I. Yes. Uh -huh. And it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be amazing. We are going to trash pieces, scatter questions and answers. Yeah, that will be addressed mm -hmm. very soon. So till then, let's go over to the interlude. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Rosta J. Thank you very much, Rosta J, for that fantastic presentation. I remember the first time that I listened to that song during their concerts a few months ago. And I was like, oh, I started at living where the Jehovah carry me do. Oh. Okay. Oh. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> uh, that, song, that, song, that song took over. It took over me. Ah, uh, fantastic one. God bless you, Rasta J. More anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Now to the panel discussion. In fact, the questions were leaking in the bag that before the time, like five had already poured out, you know, and we're like, hey, it's going to be a very fantastic one. Panel discussion now. Um, and so we're going to be inviting to the virtual chair. We're going to be inviting the Winlows. I hope have Mommy, Mommy Remy Mommy. Bangoje, and then we have myself. And then if there's anybody else that we are meant to be having, we are going to be adding to the virtual chair as well. But we already have a few questions on us in our sleeve. But if you still have from some questions you want to ask, probably. <clears throat> so, so the panel discussion. Okay, so if you still have some questions, that is perfectly fine. We're still open to extra questions. Okay. Mommy and Will is with us. So to so, throw a question yeah. to you, Ma. But I want to know if you are ready for me. Oh, yeah, I'll throw the question. Okay. So, Would, um, so the, question? the question goes first. <laughs> I think the question is going to be projected. So I'll just um read the number. Uh number five. Okay, no, no. number four. Ah. Number four. Number four. And number four question says. How can we spice up our relationship? This premarital sex is not allowed. And there has been plenty. Don't, 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 don't. don't, 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 don't. So <laughs> how do we how do we, how do we make this courtship interesting? <laughs> Rather than Sister Mary, Sister Joseph, <laughs> brother and Brother Joseph. Joseph, how have you been? Fine, thanks. Let us pray. <laughs> how do we... <laughs> how okay, so... One... um, yeah. yeah, first of all, you have to find your interests. That's mm. the first thing. You have to find your interests, mm. and um, not every, not the two of you won't be, won't have similar interests. But even your differences in your interests, you should have something that both of you can do. You should have something you can do commonly. You know, you can do together. No, I don't mm. mean together like together. You now, like sometimes we like for us, we sometimes we hang out. Like when he's around, we go. We must. We are intentional about public places. We are very intentional about public places. So we'll hang out. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we go to an eatery with G's. We talk about plants. We, we talk about plants. We 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 used to read books. We have what they call book time. We read books a lot. This person is interested in what book have you read? You know, we book, we do book study, yeah, Mr. Lou. We do book studies together. Not together, like you know, understand when we're together, when we hang out, we talk about what we have read. So we're very engaged. And listen. The business, the business in engagement with the couple has to do with the business of engagement with two persons has to do with their the their individual business in their mind. Now, before you can be busy together, you know, knowing what you know, just the person has to open, like have something that the person visualizes, have a vision. Like, for example, if we are if, if for example, my husband is introducing a book. You know, and you don't even have something, you don't have a vision, you don't have a foresight, you don't have that zeal for all those kind of things. You know, it's going to be hard. You understand? It's going to be very difficult for you to enjoy such kind of entertainment. You know, so it's very important. So 
the first thing for us is we had our similar interests. I had, I love to read, even to now, like I like reading. You know, my husband would send me videos to one watch, we talk about it. You know, it was very engaging. It was very engaging. You know, talk about it. Then you can hang out. We go out. We go out. We go out. We go for conferences. You know, you know, and all of that. We go. To, we attend conferences. We attend meetings. We hang out to just chill. We but we're intentional about public places because private places lead to a lot. You know, and even if we have to, like for example, times when I had to go to my husband's house and he didn't even have his house until it was close to when we went to get married. That's when he moved. But times where I had to go at all, I must always go with. I must always go with a chaperone. I must always have somebody with us. Like we will talk together in the living room, you know, with G's, we laugh and that's it. So I think that's that. So that's how you can have fun. You just look for your interests, where you're interested in together, your similar interests, and you glide on it. You know, if it's movie, you can go to the movies, you know, after doing movie, talk about movie. Me, we're not, I'm not a movie person. My husband is not a film person. Although once in a while we do film. So these are the ways you can, we can spice up. We go for conferences a lot. Like we attend meetings, you know, all of that. Yeah. So that's it. We watch videos. We discuss about it. So it has to do with interested in really. Personal interests. I can mm -hmm. take that. So that means in a case where you are dating someone that you don't even connect with each other's interests in any way whatsoever, then that means there's going to be an issue, right? Mm -hmm. is, is, is that what you're saying, ma'am? Sorry, I didn't get that. So that means if both of you have interests that do not align, that you don't even that you don't even buy at all, that means it's good. Yeah, if you have it, the world is not the world is not interest because in 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 um when you're building a successful home, you and Tolu, for example, may not have similar interests, but mm -hmm. you just have a way of adapting, especially when it suits the given moment, especially when it suits your mm -hmm. given season. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is more of mindset. Now, if mm -hmm. for example, I'm that kind of person that is not a reader. And one of the ways we have seen that if we can richly engage ourselves so that we're not bored is reading. It's going to be a problem. Mm. If I'm that kind of person that doesn't watch things, I'm not, I don't want to go for conferences. I'm not, I'm not giving to, I'm not giving to exposure. You know, I'm not giving to upgrade a mental upgrade. It's going to be hard getting involved with this kind of engagement. So mm. it starts with the mindset. What does this person set his or her mind on? Yeah. You know, because marriage is actually the union of two mindsets. Mm -hmm. So, and where the mindsets are not really sinking, there's so much of this kind of mental um, and things that you should engage with that you can actually really do. You can, mm -hmm. you may not, you may end up not doing it. Mm -hmm. For example, the person my husband met before me, you know, she wasn't when you talk when you talk about let's read books together. It's hard. She never wants to do that. Talk about mm -hmm. this. It's hard. She doesn't want to get involved. She say, I beg you are boring. Mm -hmm. If people don't have similar mindsets, you can't be interested in similar things. That's what I'm mm -hmm. saying. Okay. Makes Thank sense. You Thank you very much, Ma. <clears throat> so there is a question here for Mommy Remy, and uh, I believe she's with us. Yes, I think so. Is not one yeah. Yeah. How much of my past should I tell my partner? Question eight says, how much of my past should I tell my partner? Mommy Remy, please, you like to answer. How much Press the law. Should I tell my partner? Is is it everything or something you need to know? Hallelujah. Yeah. As long as you belong to the same kingdom, you see, if you are not, if both of them are not on the same template, it might be difficult. But by the grace of God, we are talking about people that are on the same template. Praise the Lord. As much yes, as you are on the same template, as long as we are both children of God, <laughs> there is nothing too difficult. Not mm -hmm. to know each other more. So uh, why people are afraid of discussing the hidden one, the problematic one, is because they don't understand that that is where Satan is sitting down. If I am mm -hmm. hiding my past secrets from my husband, that is where the devil will go and hammer. So the best thing is to open up and pray and destroy the plans of the devil. So personally, mm. by the grace of God and by the word of God, I should have nothing. We should have nothing hiding. Mm. So discuss everything as much as you understand. Ask questions. 
Which mm. school did you go? Do you have boyfriend before? What are your relationship before? What happened before? This and this discourse. At times, it may be painful, but it is better to open up and destroy the plans of the devil. Mm. So you mm. get it now. So yeah. it, it is good. Mm. That is why I started with being born again. If you're not born again, you are not on the same template. If you're on the yeah. same template, nothing should be serious to hide from each other. Mm. Okay, if I'm hiding from Thank my you. husband, who else will I tell? Mm. If mm. you're hiding from your wife, who else will you tell? So we must open up for God to heal us. Mm -hmm. Praise the Thank Lord. You, Hallelujah. So, so both the positive the one uh, and the negative Hallelujah. one. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So it's not a matter of uh, God bless who, is you, sir. who is in Christ is a new creature. So therefore, all things have passed away. So I don't need to say it again. <laughs> they Thank need to you. be aware of everything. Thank you very much, mommy. Next question. It's going to who? One. It's going to the windows. Okay. Number one. I know it's the will of God for my life, but he has serious anger issues. Should I go ahead in this courtship or break it? So this, the person wants to know if they should go ahead with the relationship that God has led them to, but the man has serious anger issues. So she go ahead with the relationship, courtship or break it. Based on the, based on the skits that they did, I think she would be the right person yeah. to answer the question. <laughs> so this one now, they didn't say he used to be too, but he has anger okay. issues. And then the person said, I know it's the will of God for me. Mm. So that was as well. So like the okay, so so I will just say this: the will of God, the will of God accommodate. Okay, the will of God, the will of God accommodates transformation. The will of God accommodates change. The will of God accommodates a renewal. So, what am I saying? All of these things. When there is a will, when God gives a will regarding someone, which is it's good that we submit to the will of God, but God is not man and is not a fool. Now, no. if I'm going to go out with someone, for example, let me in fact let me share my story. The first person I went out with was a pastor, and we heard that God said I'm the one for him. And the guy was cheating on me. Wow. wow. So it would have been foolish of me to say, oh, because it's the will of God, I should not marry a faithful cheat. Mm. <laughs> so the will of God accommodates transformation. So mm. as much as I'm talking to him, I'm like, I'm telling, I was telling him, set boundaries, do this. And he still, he was analyzing. In fact, he was using scripture to even manipulate a lot of wow. things. And so we ended up breaking up. So what am I trying to say now? When you don't see fruits of teachability, it's not a good to go. Marriage is not mm. the right ground. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So when you need to see, say by their fruits, you shall know. You know, so that you know, so you have to see fruits of teachability mm. to accept the proposal for marriage, not just the will. You know, the will of God should not deny the absence of good character. Mm. The will of God should not deny the absence. It's not void of good character. It's not void of teachability. So when you don't see those fruits, it should not, you shouldn't welcome, you know, a proposal. You shouldn't welcome marriage. Thank you. Praise Thank God. you so, so much, Thank ma. you. Words of wisdom. That is very true. That is very true. Uh, next no, no, no. Before we go to the next question, please, let's try to maintain one minute. We have one minute on the timer because... We would, like to, we would like to we would love to address as many questions as we can so we want to keep to the time of one yeah. minute one okay minute. so for mommy Bangoje, the next question what happens when parents say you must not marry from this tribe what and what if the tribe happens to be god's will for your life what must an individual do in this situation so the person is, wants to know is if um um, the parents are against him or are married from a certain tribe, but that's the will of God for their lives. So what should the person do in this situation? I didn't get it. Please come again, please. Okay, the person wants to know Sorry, please. What, happens, what happens when your parents say you must not marry from a certain tribe and that tribe is where God has told you you should marry from. That's the will of God for your life. So what do you do in that situation? Ah, praise the Lord. Pray and pray more. 
Hallelujah. If you are sure and you have other people around you, pray. Beg God to convince your parents. Mm. Calm down and let God work it out. Honestly, let God work it out. And if you are the one that is timid, if you want to dance to the tune of your parents, but I, I will believe that if you allow God, God will convince your parents. Praise the Lord. Pray and Hallelujah. relax. Allow God to work it out. Hmm. Thank you Thank very, you very much, much, man. That was a quick and precise answer because a lot of people ask those questions but they think they might be the answer of oh cutting off from the parents and doing what god says you do but you know the truth is there's a reason why god has made them your parents so if god is the one that has placed them above you then you can also trust god to work things out and touch their hearts in that regard so that's beautiful answer thank you very much okay let me add this sometimes sometimes god will allow the parents to say no for Mm. those guys to to be able to calm down Mm. because you know it is not easy for a parent to just say yes immediately mm. the parents want to see this girl say for example i have daughters and they say i like your daughter so i want to see the seriousness i want to yeah. see how far you go i want to see god in action i want to be convinced so i can't mm. you don't expect us to just say okay oh, okay oh. no so you have to pray and calm down and allow god to work it out don't cut your parents off they are interested. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Some of the some of the questions you I can answer. I hope you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so okay. I, should, I, should I still go ahead with this? Yes, I think the so. next question. So the next question, which one? This. Oh, it's no longer okay. Please, we started our relationship without putting any boundaries, but we have now realized what boundaries and but we now realize what boundaries and how important boundaries are we are now trying to put boundaries and we can't if we can't always breaking it and even discouraged now please sir moms please sirs and moms what should we do this is a very serious question and i I understand what this question is saying uh so they started relationship of without any boundaries and now things have happened and now they want to create boundaries but it's gotten too difficult that they they can't they can't seem to just hold down the boundaries so what should should be the solution yeah praise the lord go for deliverance it takes god in you to be able to set boundaries and follow Hmm. so look for a, a man of god you see that's why i say all these things we are saying, you can only do it, you can only love it if you are a child of God. And you have authority, I mean spiritual authority over you. For this type of problem, see your pastor and let them pray for deliverance, for the baptism of Holy Ghost, so as to hate it, so as to be free from it. Because mm. all these things we are saying is from the spirit of the devil. Mm. So you need to be delivered from the spirit of the devil so as to stand right and walk with the word of God. Praise the Lord. Mm. Then begin to help yourself by listening to messages, read books, uh, watch good movies, Mm. hear music, praise God all the time so that your lifestyle can be tuned to the kingdom setting. Mm. Praise the Lord. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means that for that kind of answer, it's not really about that relationship anymore. Best still, just like mommy says, the relationship put it in one side, first of all. Individually, there needs to be a renewing of the mind of the two of the two parties before they can even say they want to come back for a relationship. There has to be that renewing because it's from there that I mean, if the if the if the if the eyes are single, they will the the, the I'm talking about is the fact that um they, there has to be a renewing of the mind. There has to be a cleansing of the mind. The, the work has to be done in the person's spirit before it can reflect into other things such as the relationship. So thank you very much, Mommy, for Your that. Exactly. Life. Nobody will have light. <laughs> thank you very much for that. If the IBC, nobody will have All right. light. Yeah. Moving on to the next question. How do I cope with the negative past of my partner? How do I cope with the negative past of my partner? I think we can answer that. Yeah. Okay, so it has a past. And you must be willing to have... Yes, yes. Everybody have a past. 
So you have to be willing to have a forgiving heart, especially if God has led you to this relationship. And then are you seeing genuine fruit? Like um, Mrs. Naoli mentioned that um, the will of God accommodates transformation. So can you actually see genuine fruit of a total transformation in the life of this person? So whatever the past was, has it been left in the past or it's still creeping into the future, mm. into the present, rather into the present? So if it has, you know, the guy has... The, that's been forgiven by God, you should also, you know, forgive him and move past it. And we pray that God will help you. Also, ask for the help of the Holy Spirit to to forgive and move on past the relation, the negative past. <clears throat> so, Next question. Okay. Someone asked a question saying that how do you love again after a heartbreak, a major heartbreak? How do how do you even how do you bring the heart to love again? Mm. And that's a very strong question. And the thing about heartbreaks, the thing about heartbreaks is heartbreak, look at it as a physical injury that happens, but then healing also happens. But then the way things heal will be determined by the steps that you take. Some people feel that they are already healed, but they're actually not healed. It is just covered. And then when they get into another relationship, those things come, those, the manifestation of that previous hurt comes back to haunt them again. So when you go through any major heartbreak, there is a there is there is the balm of Gilead that you are meant to apply to that heart. And how do you apply it? The time that you spend in God's presence, renew, yeah, I keep saying renewing your heart, your mind. I don't know why that word just keeps coming back. But you need to spend that time to make sure that God has as 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 healed the mind. Of course, you don't expect the heart to disappear on it on a, 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 um, at his at, at a at a go. But these steps that you take. When you when you confide in an elder in a, in a spiritual in the spiritual leader when you pray study God's word these things heal over time and there is something about the joy of God and the peace of God that passes all understanding when that peace comes to the heart of a gen, of a child of God it, what time up oh time up already oh are you sure it was on zero all along are you sure anyway so that you have to make sure that you are genuinely healed so that the next relationship will not we will not suffer for that thank you there's a side question that someone asked that how do you is it okay to call someone baby darling sweetheart in the relationship uh i saw that question <laughs> <laughs> i don't think there's anything wrong with pet Let names, uh, hey. pet names. can we use sweetie honey, honey baby, baby love sweets Sugar. chocolates <laughs> honey bob <bear. laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with using pet names in, in a relationship. In a relationship because the first thing is more special to you than other people. So mm. I don't see anything wrong with that. It's absolutely fine. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh -huh. Mommy, we have a question for you. Um, is it wise to be in a relationship where both partners have a career or profession that ha that is very tasking, time tasking, mm. e.g. a nurse and a doctor? Mm. <clears throat> So is it why is it advisable? Um, <clears throat> so, so I am coming from the will of God point. So mm. if God is peering you together, sit down and decide how to mm. run your own. Mm. Because, because God has given you this assignment of a home, a business, mm. a ministry. So it is now left for you to sit down and beg God how to run it. Mm. It will take a kind of little sacrifice because two of you cannot be away from home at the same time yeah. when children are coming in. So beg God to receive how to run. There's nothing bad in two of them having a career, yes. But it is wrong if you are unable to run the home well. Mm -hmm. thank you very much ma that's that is part of the functions like you mentioned ma of courtship mm -hmm. so courtship is not only for fun and games yes but these are the the serious these questions that you need to ask if there's going to be sacrifice from both ends there's going to be compromise of any kind these are is in the courtship that you decide that so it's not only i love you i love you uh mm -hmm. want to spend time let me, give you, let me give you an example sorry mm -hmm. let me give you an example yes ma'am. i was working in Ogun state I was working in Ogun State. My husband is working in Oshu State. And we believe in stay and stick together. We mm. believe in staying together. So somebody has to sacrifice. Mm. 
So we pray and beg God, where are we going to stay? Mm. So if you are staying in Oshun State, I will leave. Mm. If you are staying in Ogun State, he will leave. Mm. So in the course of prayers, we send in our applications and God established where we will stay. And mm. that is where we are still today. Wow. So he mm. made the sacrifice, but God later reward him. Mm -hmm. So I can pay the sacrifice. He can pay the sacrifice as long as you are doing it in God's way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. That's a fantastic you. answer. So another question says, is it wrong to consider physical attraction in choosing a spouse? I feel like God is not interested in me being physically attracted to the person. As long as he says that's the person for me, I should just follow. I feel afraid already. I don't have a list of what the person should look like, but I want to be attracted to the person at least. Ah, you said you want to answer because your husband is fine. Oh, God. That's the truth. Yes, you're fine. You're fine. I know. <laughs> I try, I try. We answer the question. You tell, we answer too because my wife is fine. We are. Are you not? Okay. I, 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 I mean, the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord, mm -hmm. and the plans that the Lord has for you are good and not of evil. evil. So, first and foremost, the most important thing is the will of God. Yeah, it is the will of God. For example, mm -hmm. when before I met met my husband. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had no idea. I didn't have a list. To she be too doesn't have a list. Yeah, she doesn't so, have a uh -huh. list. But she wanted to be at... Although I didn't want anybody short. Mm. <laughs> Funny enough. And the people that were coming were short. Mm. So I got to the point where I was like, you know what, God, if you want me to marry somebody short, tall, whatever <laughs> quality the person has, mm. I surrender to your will because you see ahead. You know mm. what lies ahead of me. Mm. And we've heard several stories of people that were initially not attracted to their husband. Yes, that's actually the point. And I always really say about. something. If it's physical attraction, beauty, Beauty, handsomeness yeah it it people become better like i look at my parents picture when they got married and now oh the glow up the glow is amazing there's something called there's, glow up the glow is amazing yep if my mom was looking at my dad's finest i'm sure she wouldn't yeah, have good out, no, yes. yeah but now he's, he's i mean yes even my dad kev even my dad <laughs> even my dad in those days what we're trying to make is it just trust god 100 he's yeah. going to bring the perfect person uh -huh. and the attraction will come it yeah will, will and there's something long. my mother said too when she when when my father proposed to my mother she had no attraction actually but then she prayed about him and then she specifically said in her own words that there was now one afternoon he just came to her house and then the love just flooded her heart and she was like this man is actually handsome more. you know so these things actually happen there are many things that we feel uh, yeah. is that definition of handsome mm -hmm. but then as we grow older because the truth of the matter is our vision and our our, our perception our, of beauty yeah. morphs is. so yes. if you yeah. choose based on what you see now you don't even know what the person will look like decades mm -hmm. later you know but god who sees the future mm -hmm. and knows you better than you know yourself mm -hmm. gives you his will and then you see that as you spend time with the person you'll be like ah, anyway this person's no bad though ah, it's just no bad you know so sorry yeah. just to add on the final note and there's no one size fits all maybe you are scared because you've heard stories of of people, people that, that said they were very they were ugly yeah it might not to. be the case for it you be the case for example i was yes the fine brother I was not initially attracted, but he's a fine brother. Me, so I was attracted. The attraction came easy. Me, I was attracted. <laughs> I saw her and she was fine. And I said, this baby's fine. So it's different for different people. Yeah, there's no one nice uh, feature. So yeah. Just All trust right. God. <laughs> Next question. Next question. How important is it to tell your parents to pray for you if you believe God is leading you to someone? This is before courtship. This is before courtship. Mommy, Mommy. please. What's how important is you must have, to our parents? You, you must have been a Christian and your parents are aware of it. Mm. Look at Jesus. G they knew who Jesus was mm. during mm. the time that they, they went for the marriage feast. It mm. was Mary that told them about Jesus. Whatever I said, do it. She mm. knew who Jesus was at home. So let your parents know your conviction. Let them know who you are. Let them know your stand in Christ. Mm. So by the time you don't come and tell them about marriage, they will not be too surprised. They know that you are mature and you are a child of God. So let Christ be seen in you in and out. Mm. Don't deceive yourself. Mm. 
Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, man. It's actually very important too, because like the proverb says, whatever we what we see standing, our elders will see when they are sitting. There are many things that, like we said, God has placed your parent over you for that you might not even realize. So when you bring them into the picture, it actually stre- it strengthens your convictions. It, 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 it boosts your confidence, even in what you have received as well, when they pray along with you on certain things. So it's a beautiful thing. Uh, any, any other question? Yeah? Any other question? Okay, that says, my question is when you pray to God for a spouse, should you put in human effort like dating apps or matchmaking services? Or we just pray and wait? Ah, let's answer this. One. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Do you pray and wait? Mm. Uh, the reason why I would like to answer it is because it's in the line of social media. All right. It's she, in the line of social media. She's not like that. <laughs> Ma? I said. Ma? I said, she may you know that I will not like that. I'm ah, mommy, I know you will not like that. So you ah, answer mommy. that question. No, 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 no. <laughs> I know our mothers will not like that. Ah, <laughs> dating apps. Uh, the, the reason why I'm going to say a no for such things is not not like just like uh, mommy Ann Willie has said. It's not about what is a sin and what's not a sin. It's about wisdom. What is wise and what is appropriate for you. These dating sites were actually created not with the mindset of uh, bringing uh, people of like minds in terms of Christians yeah. together, all right? The best, permit me to say this, but the best platform for dating mm. or for or for match, match finding <laughs> is in the house of God. <laughs> you go for singles programs. Mm. Mommy Gloria is organizing a singles <laughs> program in August. Go there. <laughs> Not like you're going there to find a partner, but yeah. That is where people, that is in the place of service. It's in a place where you will find people who are the, who are the same like mind yeah, as you that. are. You won't find them on dating <laughs> apps. Dating apps, everybody is packaged. Mm-hmm. Everybody is taking the best pictures with filters. Yeah. But, and then apart from in the house of God, in your place of service, God brings the right person to you. That is the best place to find. So it's not in dating apps and whatnot. So I think that's the answer yes. I would give. So I think the, the preparation you can do is just, you know, prepare yourself, your mind, like get yourself ready for the person God is bringing your way. So yeah. develop yourself mm. emotionally, psychologically, physically, develop yourself. But and so don't like try to help God, if I can use that word. Mm, that's what I was going to say. Don't, don't try to help God. In the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. The Lord is still leading. He still leads. He, he's, he's concerned about every aspect of your life. He's the orchestrator and originator of marriage. And he wants, you know, godly homes to be built and, you know, to fulfill purpose. So please trust the Lord. Build your relationship with him and let him direct you. Mm. Okay. Mommy, this question is for you. How do you handle a situation where there is someone who keeps putting oh. pressure on you to get married? And you don't even like this person. But from an ordinary man's perspective, he fits the criteria of a husband because he is older and ready for marriage. <laughs> and for marriage. Yeah. It's a very funny question. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the person, the person fits the criteria. He has a job, he has a but car, he, he has a person. house, he's of right age, he has mm-hmm. he has beard. Saying, oh my Everybody's God. saying, ah, <laughs> this person is the right person. But you don't even really like him, but he fits all the criteria and he's pestering you for marriage. Yeah. So what do you do in that situation? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it, every, is it that everybody that we enter into that marriage <laughs> is it that everybody that no it's that you marriage? and the person it will be you and the person alone if the person is not convinced if the person is not happy <laughs> the gift of God make one happy make mm. one rich and add no sorrow if you are thinking about it and you are not happy it means there's a problem mm. if you are meditating about it and the peace of God is not there. It means that you should check there's a problem. For mm. the fact that everybody see that is okay does not mean press that no. Yes, uh, hallelujah. If I hear you. Sorry. For the fact that everybody likes him does not mean it is the best yes. for him. 
Mm. God knows the best. So the best comes when God speaks to you and you are happy and yeah. you have your peace. Mm. So you get it. Yes, ma'am. So she should not be pressurized. Mm. She should stand firm and know what God is saying and look inward. Praise mm. the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the important thing is what God has said to you mm-hmm. and not what everybody is suggesting to you. Yes, At the end of the yeah. day, it's going to be you, God, and the person. Yeah. So what God has told you is most important. Next question. I am sure I heard from God in the beginning. My wedding day had been fixed. Introduction done. But I am afraid. Should I go ahead or what should I do? Hmm. I feel the question is not very complete because I'm what afraid, are you afraid exactly, of? Exactly, afraid of what? what That's what I'm trying to say. The yeah. question is not very complete. If if uh, I'll, I'll probably answer, I'll, I'll answer half of it. You can answer the other half. Okay. The first half I want to answer is um, if you are about to, if you are going into a marriage process with someone and there isn't peace in your heart, then you really need to take a pause and assess that situation because where God as a where God is a part of and God is in support of. He brings peace to it. Yeah. Where there is trouble in your spirit or there's trouble in your heart, it means something is wrong. And trust me, it doesn't matter if you've done introduction or if you've done uh, whatever, or you've met the guy's parents or you've met the girl's parents. When something is troubling in your spirit, it's an indication that you need to seek God's yeah. face again. Because the instruction that he gave you last month could not could be different from the instruction he wants to give you this month. So update your OS, go in God's presence, and find out what the issue is. Okay. Um, hmm. oh, oh, my... Because oh, I said a bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my uh, goodness. Oh, God. Uh, anyway, yeah. so yeah, so okay. Okay. okay, I remember. Yeah. I want to say that there's some, you know, couple that God will bring together and they will have their bat- battles to fight together. Because I've heard of a couple that had bat- serious battles that they had a choice of either say, you know what, do you go your own way and fight your battles or agreeing to the will of god to fight the battles together so if this is the situation you're in you still need to go back to god and mm, sort it and out because to be honest yeah marriage is 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 blissful it has its good times but you you guys also need to come together and you know win wars win battles together and fight together so if it's maybe some things you're noticing that is point because you said you are sure that this is the will of god for you so yeah. maybe god wants you to deal with certain things yeah. before you proceed into the wedding into yeah. the marriage and sometimes so, it could be even be the devil bringing fear yes, so you just have to yes it can actually be the it. devil yeah. bringing fears mm. so you are you have to take time out for yourself and seek the face of god mm. to to check that fear to check that fear and sort it out yeah. and deal with it all right thank you very much so there's a very funny question and it's kind of like an overall thing because we are saying we're talking about courtship do's and don'ts mm-hmm. so someone now asked the question that um is dating good for christians or not because where i'm coming from they believe that once a guy <clears throat> says his intentions more like less more like less communication till you give him an answer the courtship starts i don't understand but what the person is asking is, is dating good for christians because this person says once the guy says uh i want i want to marry you Bam, courtship starts. But then when the person says courtship starts, I just think I need to clarify something. When we say dating, in Christian circle, when we are saying dating, we are actually talking about courtship. We are not talking about where a boy and a girl are just checking it out and seeing where it leads to. No, we don't do that as children of God. When we say dating, we interchange those words, dating, courting, but we are actually talking about courting. And courtship, yes, is very important. Um okay, you've answered yeah. the question. Yes, okay. I think I've answered that. My partner loves yeah. video calls, but it actually affects us. How do we balance up as we always want to see ourselves because it's a it's a long distance relationship? relationship. Mommy, can you answer that question, ma? It's a long distance relationship. Long distance relationship. The man likes video calls because he wants to see her face, but it, it, affects, but it affects them. them. Don't know how. We don't know how. We don't know how it affects them, but they said it affects them. them. So how do we balance up? <laughs> Mommy should tell us how the how she so how our, our generation survived without video call. It's true. Because it's later now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dear, my sweet dear Remy, how are you fearing? If you are good, glory be to God. My purpose for writing this it's letter. Okay. Let mommy herself leave. 
<laughs> you know, my dad has my has some of my dad in those programs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has some of them. So maybe we should go back to that era of Friends love letters <laughs> and post office. <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> over to you, man. Friends Sorry. Are not. Hallelujah. When, when when we write when when I write letters, letter, I will wait for one month to receive oh. reply. <laughs> one month. Jesus. And if I want to call, long suffering. I will go. And... <laughs> <laughs> this is long suffering. Ah, God of mercy. <laughs> I mean, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. You Hallelujah. see, for long this, for long distance relationship, I feel no problem in it. In fact, it's a way of discipline your your flesh. Mm. Pray and decide to see each other, maybe twice a month. Or once a month, mm. you know. By the time you create that time, whatever you want to discuss, you will have written it down. You will have That's right. Write it down. You're seeing That's each right. other. Will... Oh, and if you want to okay. call, call and discuss meaningfully. Mm-hmm. You see this issue of video call. I know where that person is coming from. Yes, it's... we know too much. I will generation it. Sorry, ma. Sorry, sir. Generation is bad, yeah. Ah, it's yeah. uh, Christ. It's only Christ that. <laughs> it's only Christ ah. that, that is appointing you. Yes, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. So, right on, ma. I, 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 <laughs> I will beg that person. I will plead with that person that you use this period as a way of checking your life. <laughs> Mm. Don't do video call. That video call, you will be showing your breast, showing your nakedness. That is what is affecting you. So don't do it. That is the Let's just get Castle Toro. Let's call it Spade Spade. What? Castle Toro? People, I'm going to call you back. I'm going to call you back. I just want to talk to you. I'm not sure, man. We're not not sure, man. We are not sure. We are not sure. <laughs> Let's stick to English for now. <laughs> ah, it is well. It is well. It is true. You're right, man. So that discipline. That discipline. That 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 is why whenever I'm giving an opportunity like this, I always hammer on the spirit of God. Yes, if you don't have the spirit of God, you will follow the trend of this generation. Mm. So video call at night for coaching for partners is wrong. It will affect mm. your spirit mind. Mm. Your emotional feelings will rise up. Mm-hmm. You will do video steps. I mean, what is you will do it. So mm. it's better to flee away from it. Flee all appearances of, of evil. evil. Flee, mm. don't do it. Mm. So beg God that this courtship help us. Meet mm. twice a week. Find a neutral place and meet, discuss, pray. If you want to hang out, hang out, go to meetings, go to programs, fuel your spiritual mind. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? Keep telling yourself that one day, one day, I will marry. One day, one day, mm. I will marry. Before that time, help me to keep myself. Yes. Praise the Lord. And Hallelujah. Thank you very much, man. Thank you much for that. Thank you. So just uh, there's there's always time for everything. There's a time for everything. So that's why we've uh, we've almost overflowed, you know, setting boundaries. I remember when uh, Mommy Anguli was talking. She mentioned that when her husband, her fiance, then was coming to visit her, and they realized that it was a problem. They had to, you know, set boundaries. They had to, you know. <clears throat> review their boundaries and say okay let's stay away from each other for a while we'll be doing other forms of communication mm. so if you realize that video calls is affecting you review your boundaries that's right and focus on other things yeah. because once you start introducing intimacy physical yeah. intimacy right now you it will cloud your judgment it will. it will affect you know how you are seeing things and that's the only thing you'll be looking forward to yep. meanwhile there are a lot of other things you're supposed to address and talk about in the courtship phase. Mm. So please review your boundaries and with the help of the Holy Spirit enforce those boundaries. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. So there are two questions I want to quickly knock out right now. And uh, uh, the first one says, dating a guy who has plans for marriage for you, but you know you can't marry him 
I t- for example, I told my boyfriend yeah. that I no long, I'm no longer interested, and he got angry, and I had to continue with the relationship. What should I do now? The 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 we, they, they can be they can be a panador answer to this question, a paracetamol answer to this question. But then there is a there is a much more important fundamental problem, which is the question of when you enter into a courtship, who are you accountable to? Yeah. Because you you don't enter into courtship with a boy just asks you out and then you just start dating. Mm. A girl just bam. First of all, have a spiritual head that you're accountable to because the fact that you could say i broke up with him then he got angry and we continued dating again shows that there is actually nobody that you are both accountable to so you need to have (laughs) spiritual elders someone that is spiritually mature preferably someone much older than you guys that you can be accountable to that you have to report to that you have to share what is going on in the relationship with Mm. that way this will guide your thoughts so even if you no longer feel like, or you don't feel like you should marry this person. You can always go to that person and say, this is how I'm feeling about brother, so, so, so. And then the person will ask you, what did you notice? What did you see? And then they will advise and counsel you accordingly. And then the second question of, can someone ever miss the person God has for them? If so, what then happens? So I want to just knock it out as well. And the answer I'll give to this is, I keep telling, I tell people this a lot. The will of God for you is not one person. It's not a singular person. It is a position. All right, because human beings will always be human beings. God's plan will never fail, but people change. So because people change doesn't mean God's plan will change. So rather than change his plan, he will change the person. So if you miss, or let's say in quotes, God led you to somebody and maybe for some reason, maybe you, you, the person said, I'm not interested. There are many factors. Maybe even you were in the wrong standing that time. You were dating somebody you shouldn't be dating. So mm-hmm. you knew this was a person you was married. You couldn't do that because you are dating one person. So you, in, in quote, you miss the person. If you go back to God, genuine repentance, there is so, uh, uh, God has people. If God could tell the prophet that after you, there are 7,000 prophets that are yet to bow, to bow. Now, I'm not using this to encourage you to just feel like there are many <laughs> spirits tires out there for you that's not the point the point is where you are standing right in god and you are in his prayer and you are standing in his presence on his uh, how do i put it you are in a right standing with him you can't say you will miss his will for your life you will not because god will not watch you go astray god will not watch you date the wrong person god yes. will not give you to someone that he knows is not his will for you he will not allow it to happen mm-hmm. he will definitely orchestrate something that will die to, to be glaring mm-hmm. to your eyes that this is not his will for my life. Except right? you now decide to Except be stubborn. You now decide to be stubborn. To do otherwise, then that's in your head. Then it's up to you that that mm-hmm. is you. All right. So I think that's uh, so most importantly, don't forget spiritual head, mm-hmm. a spiritual figure, a spiritual mentor that can uh counsel you as you get into a relationship. So we are not sure how many minutes we have left, but uh questions mm-hmm. are still pouring in. If- you sometimes you that after marrying your partner, you find it. How important are friends and family opinions during courtship? Ma, please help us answer that. How important are friends and family opinions during courtship? I think she has kind of she answered that answer. before, something like that. Because our first question was, Are they going to live with you? Oh, yes, true, 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 true. That's so true. that's what mommy asked that. <laughs> oh, but mommy, is there anything you'd like to add to that? about how important a friend yes yes addition friends and family opinions as long as it tallies with the word of god Mm. as long as it tallies with god's with god's advice as long as it tallies with god's God's advice. advice yeah because every advice and opinion that is given, it has to be cross-checked mm-hmm. through the scriptures. Yes. Cross-checked through the scriptures. So some people that are asking that will this video be available on YouTube? It will be on Damilola Mike Bamiloye's YouTube channel. So you can always check it Amen. out. Amen. Yes. Thank you Amen. very much, mommy. I think we've gotten to... I think we've answered it. Some people, there's a repetition of questions. If there's any questions uh, you don't like, address, please. yes. Okay. Uh, Mommy Talk said by next week it will be available on YouTube. So we have questions that are being repeated. But I believe we've yes, cleared a good of number questions. of the questions. Thank you very much, Mommy, for being a fantastic you, mother. It's always a pleasure seeing you. Thank God you. God bless so you. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, 
Uh, okay. Oh, he came late. Ah, oh, no, this question. <laughs> okay, let's just. Okay. He came late to the very first date with no apologies. Is this a red flag? You don't have an answer to that. Yeah. <laughs> I think red flags vary based on individual. Yeah, based on individual. I mean, but this one. He came <laughs> late. I asked him now what happened. <laughs> Communication. Could have happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was traffic if it's Nigeria it could have been Nigeria yeah. traffic. I think more than just this, mm. the question of um, this this sub question should be how how are you communicating? Yes, Is there communication the communication in that relationship? So he came, he didn't apologize, blah, 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 and then he just continued. Mm. No, ask, talk, communicate. The guy is my covert, and now he's asking my hand in marriage. Please advise me. Ah, mommy, mommy over, over to you, you man. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say mommy? Why do you ah. say mommy? You come, you come. <laughs> <laughs> we sent to the upper ranks. <laughs> we sent to the upper ranks. <laughs> praise, he gave his life to Christ. Hallelujah. Hmm. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> as long as she's sure that <laughs> as long as she's sure that it is good. Oh, exactly, you see, exactly. we, we have we we have this this um this this ego of saying it's my convert. So you get mm. it. It can mm. be anybody's convert. God can use anybody. But as long as he's growing, he's a child of God, and you hear from God. Mm. As long as you can, as long as you can establish that, there is nothing wrong. Take away that ego. Here you get it. The person mm. you preach to today, tomorrow can God can make him to rise quickly and use him more than her. So just establish: is it God? Is it not God? If it is God, pray for grace and go ahead. If it is not God, reverse. But be sure that God is speaking. Praise God. Okay. Thank you very much, Ma. I like that. Drop your ego of you saying it's your convert and hear God properly. Is God speaking? If God is speaking, glory be to God. So I don't know. I mean, I was just imagining the brothers that converted because of the sister. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is this they saw the sister five star? Are you a Christian? Oh, I want to give my life to Christ too. <laughs> well, one week later, <laughs> I want to marry you. <laughs> I guess that's why mommy said, if you are sure God is speaking, <laughs> if God is not speaking, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is uh, mm. oh, like the movie, um, brought, like, like, like brought, like, yeah, like, like exactly <laughs> like bros. The movie by Evangelist John <laughs> Ugutu Ashe, yeah, okay. Um, how do I cope with negative? Hello, sir. Hello, Yes, ma. Yes, ma. So, you see, some in sometimes some brothers are are are, are pretending. That is mm. why I emphasize. Uh, that's why I emphasize. You mm. see, devil too is patient. So, devil mm. can make a brother to be patient until he got that sister. Mm. That's why I emphasize mm. is God speaking. Mm. You see, uh, the heart of a man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Mm. That's why I emphasize. If you are not born again, you can't get one cannot get it right in this wicked generation. Mm. So it is possible to be deceived, and it is possible it is God. It takes yeah. a, 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 a mind of Christ to know the thin line. To yeah. understand God's mind. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma. Sure. Mm. Why do I lose interest when I meet guys? I might be showing interest. Um, I might be showing interest on calls, but the moment we meet, I just lose interest, and maybe later I start thinking, oh, why am I interested in the person actually? I think this is a lady it's, thing. Be the relationship with God. <laughs> this is a lady thing. Ah, ah, that no, that's generic answer. No, 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 no. She 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 feels interest on the phone. Maybe the guy has a nice radio voice. Hey sister, how are you doing? And everything. <laughs> then he sees the person and realizes he has long <laughs> music. And like, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. So, <laughs> so you know, voices can <laughs> like, so in such cases, <laughs> in such cases, now, maybe it's always happening because there are girls like that, you know, the voices that picture something in the face error. 
So what's the solution? That's why I say we we'll go back to the will of God. <laughs> Like that. Do you have, do you want to answer? Ah, it's a little <laughs> question now. So I said you go back to the will of God. The truth is, you can't have interest in everybody. Mm. Not everybody can fit the place of mm. um your mm. the person you're meant to get married to. That's mm. the truth. Mm. That's why we over we you know said it over and over again that it is important to seek the face of God so that He can lead you mm. to the person. Mm. So this person now the fact maybe because they are not meant to be the one that's why you are losing interest. interest. I mean it might be God mm. walking in your favor. Mm. So you are losing interest because now nah, they are not they are not the ones to fit that that role. Yeah. So when the person to fit the role comes maybe the interest will you know, arise. Arise. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you very much once again mommy for <laughs> it is always a pleasure having you with us. God Amen. bless you. Thank the Lord strengthen you and Amen. Amen. more and more and more anointing and grace as you handle your many students. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. I hope we have learned. Ah, the questions just kept oh, pouring in, wow. just kept pouring in. At the point, I was like, we are not leaving yet today. We are going to be answering questions all night. <laughs> but to the glory of God, uh, another one has dropped again. But we are, I will do like I didn't see it. I will do like I didn't see it. I didn't see the question. I didn't see the question. We are going over to announcements now. Um, the an- <laughs> Thank you very much to all those who sent their questions and to all those who are still with us. God bless you. I hope we've learned something this beautiful um, panel session. Now over to announcements. The only announcement I have from my plate is that the move, the video will be dropped sometime next week in on Damdola My Bamlet YouTube channel to look out for that. I don't know if our if our um, if our coordinator has any announcement for us in the person of Mommy Tux. Any announcement for us, Ma? Uh, th- Thank you, J. Mikey and T. Mikey. All right. Oh, that's the uh, announcement on the band. Thank you, Mommy Remy. God bless you, Ma. Thank you. That's the only announcement. You. And you have mentioned Amen. it before that there is. Really oh, that's the announcement. Really? Yeah. Oh. oh, yes, yes, yes. The, the other announcement is, like I mentioned earlier, I said for those who are asking about dating sites, go away from dating sites and come <laughs> for the Overcomers Conference 2023. Themed a Thank godly you. seed. So make sure you watch, I mean, make sure you register the, the registration link. I'm going to put it in the chat. It's going to be it's organized by Mommy Gloria. And uh, questions like this are also going to be asked uh, there. Yes. And it's physical, it's physical. And it's just 5,000 naira for five days for accommodation, for accommodation uh, and feeding, and feeding. Uh, I want to put the link in the in the caption. Uh, and also we have, um, what else again? I think that's all for the announcement. Yes, I think. I think that's all for the announcement. So we'll be moving on to closing prayer. The closing, the prayer. closing prayer. We have our daddy in the house who's going to be taking us in the closing, closing prayer. prayer. I've I've been seeing him here and there on the screen. He had been popping in and popping out, and I believe he's still here with us in the person of Daddy Elvon Jarrett is in the house. Um. That EJ, we had the pleasure of seeing him today at the Drama Minister's Power Night. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Okay, yeah. Yes, he's here. Yes, 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 yes. So over to you, Daddy. Over to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, it's, <laughs> we've had so much resources. We've had so much things we can hold on our hands several bullets and arrows that we use to fight the onslaught that the enemy is using against homes. Just before we pray, I just want you all to know that God is intentional about setting up the next generation for the home. If you look at the LGBT movement going on right now, it shows that the devil is intentional in destroying homes so that godly seed is so please count yourself as an opportunity. Um, uh, this great opportunity has come for you to be part of this. Run with these things. Stop playing games. Stop um, going the way of the world. Realize that you are in this for such a time as this. You are in the kingdom for such a time as this. Our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this program. 
Thank you for raising a generation that will be not, it's not like Samson or not like Dina. Lord, this topic has been carefully and prayerfully mm -hmm. so that, Lord, those that partake of this will be like a flaming fire and wildfire and they will activate and affect others for their generation. That, Lord, they will run and not be weary that they will walk and not faint. Lord, we pray that these messages of today will not stand as witnesses against any one of us in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray we will hear these things, and as we've heard these things, it will bring forth fruit, 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for all the speakers Amen. and all the participants. May you bless them. Thank you for everyone that has heard. We say that, Father, a mighty miracle will happen in their lives, that they will not miss it in the, in the area of any of their spouse and their relationship and even careers and everything they have to do. We pray that, Lord, you will make them succeed and finish strong. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you, Daddy. God bless you. Thank you, Daddy. God bless you. Okay. 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 Mom, mom, that, uh, mom is there. Mommy just, mom just came in. All right. All right so, ah, I don't think you can hear us. They can, can they hear us? They can now. I believe they can. Okay. They can hear you. You're welcome, man. They can hear you. All over. <laughs> okay. Well. All right. So, all right. Now for the closing praise. But uh, thank you, Jesus, for everything. It has been a fantastic program from the panel discussion to the word to the prayer to the skits and all that. We are very grateful, everybody, for coming along. Um, yes. So, if we just sum up everything that we said, the do's and the don'ts. There are so many do's and there are so many don'ts. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is that your um, your relationship with God, mm -hmm. the boundaries that you have set, mm -hmm. and what else again? You're working on yourself, working on your spiritual self. Okay. So, and this will reflect in several aspects of your life, including your relationship. All right. So thank you very much, guys. So if you want to rewatch this, let's, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> finish, finish, finish. So let's be doing as well. Like, to practice what we've learned everything we've learned just write yeah. the notes and keep it aside but let's yeah. put it to practice with the help of the holy spirit amen so you can rewatch this next week on damn family's youtube channel yes. god bless you now for the closing praise, praise. Till next time, my name is Shemai Bamiloye, aka J Mikey. My name is Tolokwe Mike Bamiloye, aka T Mikey. And God bless you. Good night. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>